yeah we make a recording of this trading and it will be available for you for future use the whole thing okay um and you have equipment with you right no equipment i mean the uh, the sensor the the tools for doing test ah uh, yes for this program yes yes in yeah, front good. of me yes. yeah yeah that's yes. good that's good that just to make sure okay let's start so <clears throat> the process of neurometria the process of this talents by brain waves is based on a basically three scientific areas one is neurophysio uh, neuropsychology sorry the first thing is neuropsychology so we do actually the test the nature of the process is the test and test is giving an exercise and getting an answer giving an um, a question and uh, getting an answer so this is a classical process of doing the the assessment test and we take these uh, pictures and exercises for the test from uh, the area called neuro psychology which is to activate the brain to work with the specific resource so we take mathematical to activate mathematical part of the brain we take creativity ex uh, exercises to activate those type of the resources and so on and so forth so it's not us to develop the test it's uh, neuropsychology which developed the tests for years and decades of the years and we collect them those of them that we need for this specific seven intelligences that we measure okay the second part and the second step of the process okay we we we, we ask the question to the brain right we let the brain work with a dedicated resource and what happened next we need the brain waves to be recorded so we need a a kind of the tool which will actually receive the signal from the brain, record it and send it somewhere. And that is the part which is based on the neurotechnology. And neurotechnology is the device, is actually that device that you have in front of you. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a radar, it's just a receiving, it's like a radio, but it needs to receive this signal, which is organically from the brain and send it to somewhere. So this part is covered by neurotechnology. And then, okay, we have the signal from the, let's say mathematical part of the brain. So how to understand if there is a talent or more resource or less resource, how to decode the signal, right? And for that step, we use neurophysiology studies which are called neural correlates of consciousness. Hello, madam. Good morning. Hi, hi, morning. How are you? Um, sorry, it, it shows that it's uh, 10 a.m. our time. That's why we Shadi and I were still preparing. We didn't know that um, it's now still 9.30. Oh, it was, it, it's being said 10 uh, by Moscow time. Other no, than no that. that's why I thought it's, um, Cyprus time. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a confusing because one message says it's uh, yeah 10 a.m. without mentioning, and another was saying yes. that it is. That's why I'm. Um, um, okay, uh, Sergi, I will log into my laptop because the iPad is too small. If you don't mind, yeah. and then yeah. when we. I do the practice we're gonna do it uh, there again 
Aha, aha. Shady is in a meeting. <laughs> you will finish. Shady, 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 Shady just joined. I, I see him. Oh, okay. Excellent. I thought he's still in a meeting. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Uh, on yeah, a, on I a... have to run out of, uh, of a meeting. Sergi, how are you? All good, all good. We're just checking the confusion of the timing. I see the different timing in the different sources has been sent. So over in a, in a Telegram support, it, it, it was said 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Correct. And, and on, the, on the email, it was 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., which actually was meant the same time, but in different time zones. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sergi, I think I have also planned to make them all start. In, um, you see, I'm I'm in Dubai, right? So it's 11:30 now, and I planned for today and tomorrow to start at 12, which is half an hour from now. Mm -hmm. uh, can, are are we able to do that? Well, we have another colleague from uh, from Indonesia joining us, but she's experiencing now the. The technical difficulties so uh it seems like it's organically goes to uh, to half an hour later okay okay let's let, let's do that because we have also a third uh, a third person who's joining us from from our team and yeah. uh, and by the way peter wanted to join as well so i told him uh, for him it's 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 always free of charge let him join and uh, um I need the credentials for the third uh, team member so he is okay. or her license to be activated prior to the practice. Okay. Uh, so the full name, uh, email, and the mobile phone number. Okay. Okay. Very, very good. Uh, let me okay. provide you this. Let me, let so me let's, let's, let, let's get back in uh, 27 minutes. Okay. Let's do okay. that. See you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi was disconnected. <laughs> oh, okay, should I be prepared? I know my system is Which one is the like, this? No, I I'm sorry. Apostrophe. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Apostrophe. I forgot to switch on the. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have. Uh, this video recording and you're going to have the slides available to you and many other documents. Thank you. It doesn't mean that you can now relax. And, uh, no, no, listening. no. But sometimes uh, the more you hear it, you, you hear it oh, one yeah, time, course, two times, you get more, sure. uh, you focus on more uh, uh, ideas and so on. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah, and you, you, you actually get more deeper understanding. Um, yeah. the, 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 the second thing, and probably the main outcome of the patent 
of the technology is that to get the patent you they 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 the authorities they have to do the global search to uh, to make sure that they patent something which doesn't exist and having the patent proves to you and to your potential partners and the clients that they are using the technology which never exist in any parts of the world so if someone tells you that i heard about that in korea that means that he that they heard about verbatoria in korea that there, there could be nothing like this uh, any in any in any part of the globe so so you have this um, what do you call it you have this exclusive we uh, it's not an exclusive uh, um, patent of the technology means that authorities of either state they confirm that there is no same technology available uh, on the markets okay so this is this is patent for russia or is this a global patent uh well it's it's a two diff two different things one is a legal another is a technical so technically that confirms that the technology is uh, is unique but legally with this patent you only can you know fight with someone who is pretending to copy it only in russia so for example if i will face the situation that someone supposedly uh, copying that in in greece right trying to do something like this we will have to apply the patent based on this uh, russian patent we will have to apply the patent uh, to the greece get the greek patent and then fight with them as long as there are like uh, 180 countries uh, globally we decided to uh, uh, to make this local patent decisions based on uh, on a on the practical needs other than that it's just a wasting of the of the, of the cash which we never have enough to cover like 200 uh, uh, countries so far it was never the case to find someone willing to copy the technology is not simple it's a self-learning uh, algorithm which uh, we already advanced with five years of measurements of the um of the brains of our kids and parents right so even if someone you know have out of the have to start the same technology from the scratch we still have like five years advance um in um in preciseness in uh, in efficiency in, in in everything so far even in china where we operate there was no any ideas to to copy paste our technology but legally, uh, if if that will be the case, we will have to apply the local patent based on our original patent and then step into the fight. Okay. You have another types of the uh, papers in the folder. It's already it's also available for you. We are protecting our brands. It's not only verbatoria for now, it's a verbatoria in Kyrillic, in Latinic. It's a talent by brainwaves being now registered. It's a talent quotient be, be, uh, being pay, uh, patented. And uh, another sub-brand that we have called Foodby. I will uh, explain you more uh, why this strange uh, brand appears in our portfolio. So you have the papers for the device. Even though device is not required to be certified or validated anywhere because of this uh, very, very low voltage operating. But uh, our vendor um, voluntarily uh, certified in Europe, having the CE certificate, the, equip, uh, the material safety certificate, the uh, battery safety certificate, the hygienic certificate. So all of the papers are there. So people may ask if it's safe. Yes, it is. It is confirmed by the papers and by the simple logic that this is not a transmitting device, it's just a radio receiver. We also have registered our system uh, in the United States uh, Library of Congress to prove that we are the owners of the system that we are selling to the United States. We now have two partners in United States and one is entering to Canada. Uh, to be able to do so, you have to prove 
to the authorities that you are the owner of the of, of that system so we we've done that in 2019 and we have this uh, 30 year certificate from the Un united states library of congress okay so that is probably the most important slide even more important than than the testing so pay attention to that. It, it does look very simple, but it only appears uh, on the fifth year of our trainings and the business development. Why are families coming to your office? Is it for more success of, the, of their kids? Yeah, sometime. Probably the, the on the top idea of the families, of the parents is of course to, uh, to bring more success for their kids in a school, in a sports, in a, any sort of competitions. Could it be better relationships and better understanding your kid, helping him to avoid conflicts with the friends in the teams? Yes, that's the, uh, the typical uh, demand and the typical issues that they have. But only one thing that they will, they will never come to your office for they will never come to your office to do tests. That's very, very important. So, I mean, when you design your, your, your advertisement, we spend a couple of years advertising testing, neurometry, uh, neural technology to do the brain test, uh, measure your potential. That simply doesn't work. I mean, it works, but not as efficient. They never type in the Google how to do neurometry of, of my brain. They never type in the Google, like how to measure brain potential, never ever. So what they Google is how to improve my relationship with kid. What they Google is why my son is so conflicting with his friends. What they Google is how to increase self-esteem of, of my son or my daughter. That's why they appear and neurometry and the service that you offer them is just a tool it's the next step not the first step the device the process the uh, the, the musical instrument the report is just a tool you start our journey and you start their journey with them by understanding why are they why are uh, why are they appearing in your office and they are not appearing to do the test still there will be few of people, few of families, you know, technology addicts who, who will be coming for fun because they are friends, they did it, but that's not, not the majority. That's not the stable source of your revenues and, and your clients. Feel that very deep inside. Find the needs of your families, find the pain points of the, of the families. It's not that simple as what is the best profession for my kid. That's even not in the top 10 of the, of the search uh, of the uh, reasons to come. The, for, for, for normal family with the kids preschool age or early school age, it's not that often to consider university. It's much more often to consider his emotional balance, his uh, you know, efficiency of the schedule, his uh, learning effect effectiveness, relationship stuff. Right, so consider to to start the business not with the positioning of the of the technology. It will not work that efficient. Start thinking of how to grasp from the market people who are willing to solve that kind of the issues: efficiency, relationship, success, stuff like that. Very simple, but it took us years to understand that we are not in the market of. Uh, testing not in the market of neurotechnology even it's just a tool okay so what is your tool <clears throat> your tool is if if i tell you the word neurometry uh, it has little idea of what uh, what what is the service so i prefer to put it in a little longer sentence but it's a very very important sentence it's here. Your tool is objective measurement of the talent potential 
So three key values in one sentence. Let's talk about it. So what is objective? Objective means that we removed all of the opinions and discussions and we removed all of the people out of the process. Subjectiveness is something coming all, always from the people mind. I'm subjective about my, my kids. My uh, teacher is subjective about my kids. It's uh, his judgment or my judgment my evaluation of the kid is always subject to my experience. It's subject to my narrow view, to a limited time that I spend with my kid or he or, or teacher or psychologist. If psychologist will give me um, an opinion about my kid, that's the subject to the tools that he, that he uses. That's the subject of his experience. That's the subject of limited time he spent with my kid. So the purpose is to remove the, uh, the people out of the process. So the least important person inside, of, uh, inside the, the testing process is myself. If I do the test, I'm the least important person in the process, least important part. My, my role is just to press the button in, in, the, in the software, that's it. There is no opinion, no judgment coming from any, anyone. It's just a pure algorithm. Receive the signal, decode the signal, build the report and send the report automatically. And you're gonna see the, in the different parts of the, of the processes that we build, how we make our parents be sure that this is an objective process, that there is no people opinion, there is no one, in the middle of the process, <clears throat> okay? So objective what? Measurement. I always give this sample of the balance of the weight. I'm overweight, for example, and um, I use a weight to, uh, to understand the digit, right? If I put myself on the balance, I see the digit, hopefully it, it's a hundred kilo, right? And that's it. My balance will not tell me how to deal with that, if I'm overweight or not, it just gives me a number. It just gives me a measurement of particular feature of my body. That's what neurometria gives us. It gives us a measurement result. It gives us a digit. It doesn't say that this is above the average of your age. This is the best I ever seen. No, it's not about that. It just says the number and the, Using the number is, is always a subject of my decision. A hundred kilo for me is something I probably go and, you know, fit and, uh, you know, more sport and uh, more, more diet. A hundred kilo for another person will be a subject to, to, uh, to eat more. Why not? Too little. I don't care. Right? So neurometria ends at the digits. Yes, we have some advices, but if we talk about neurometria as, a, as an objective measurement, then it ends on the first page of the report. We're gonna talk about that. What is the difference, the very fundamental difference between the first part of the report and the remaining pages of the report. And the digit, as I said, the balance will tell me my weight. If uh, we consider the TQ report, it will tell you the talent potential. And here lies the most important thing of understanding the process. What is the difference between your test and the other test? That's the typical question you're gonna, you're gonna discuss. What's the difference? What's the difference between your test and GMAT, the, uh, the other um, exams or assessments? The fundamental difference is that if you, if you score test result based on answers, based on correct or incorrect answers, you always evaluate the skill and that's about past, right? If, if correct or incorrect answer is the source of your information, that means that the more knowledge you have, the more skill you have, the better result you get. And the knowledge and the skill you get out of the past. You invest time, you invest, you know, parents' attention, you invest timing, you invest cash, 
in developing the skill and you get the better exam. That's, that's quite clear. But what if I never invested in my uh, son or in my daughter musical skill? Never ever. Does that mean that he, he has no potential uh, for that? No. Every brain has the resource to do anything. More resource or less resource, but every brain. If I will start playing piano to certain level, I will be able to play piano. Even, even though I, I, never, I never tried that. If I will start learning Japanese language, it requires specific resource which I never used. I will be reaching certain level. My brain has resource to do anything. But if I will do the Japanese exam now, the, 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 the result that I will get will be what? Zero. So the fundamental difference between uh, neurometria being the process without answers, without scoring correct or incorrect, without scoring how long did it take you to get to the answer, right? The fundamental difference is that we evaluate the potential for the future, any other type of the test, not saying it, it's bad, it's just another part of the story. They evaluating the past, they evaluating the skill that you have, while our result, our test result will say you the resourcefulness of that area not the skill, not how effective you are, but resourcefulness of that. And this resource may still be empty, like my musical resource, for example. I do have it. I don't know the size of it, but I definitely know it's empty. Sits and waits. Pending. Understood? Yeah, conceptually, yes. Okay, so we have uh, same process of the testing as said, raising a question, discussing, getting an answer, irregardless correct or incorrect. We always praise for this answer. Thanks for giving me an answer. Uh, same process, pressing the buttons, getting the report, 30 minutes for the test, but a little bit different for three age groups. The difference come from the different the difference comes from two main drivers. The first thing is we have to consider brain maturation. If we ask two plus two to a kid brain, then it actually will activate mathematical subconnectome of the brain. If I will ask adult two plus two, that will just appear out of his memory. So we're not gonna activate his mathematical resource of the brain. So we have to gradually increase the difficulty of the, of the exercises. But again, not for the purpose of, uh, of reaching the threshold of the difficulty that you can solve. No, just to assure that the type of the question, the level of the question that we ask is actually activating the brain resource. Okay, so it should be minimum difficult enough, minimum, minimum difficult enough to make sure that this is not out of his past experience. Out of that, by the way, there is one very important limitation is that uh, you cannot do uh, neurometry, for example, next day. So we did neurometry for this kid to, today and uh, uh, mommy is not happy with the results, so let's do it tomorrow. That will not work, simply because he already remembers the types of the questions. And what he will do in the process of tomorrow test is just to, you know, either giving the same answer or rethinking the answer. He is not going to use his mathematical power or creativity power to solve it since he, 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 he did it already. The, the most of his resources will be spent just to you know, extract the things from the memory. So the result that you're gonna get in uh, coming six, nine months is, has, has no use. You will face this situation. So some of them will come uh, secretly without telling you that uh, uh, they did it just a month ago in your office or in another country probably. Not that many, 
but uh, in that scenario you always have a very strong point only first report is the valid one the second one could be valid only if let's say nine months uh, has passed so we can have some reasons to think that uh, brain has forgotten what was done during the test okay the second driver which leads us to change the process for different age groups is the report itself so okay we do this test we recorded uh, the signals we decoded the signals but what what's the use of these measurements and for what's the advisory part of the report for adults the uh, the main question will be what is my profession which will fit to uh, to this resource distribution and for kids that will be curriculum that will be hobby right so the same process but it the result should give a different answers so that's why you have three types of the reports so three types of the modules for the testing and three types of the reports even though the process, the basic process is, is all the same and the principles are all the same. Okay. What is our customer profile? Again, uh, this is something appeared through the pain of our mistakes and our partner's mistake. The, the crucial thing to understand is that most families are not our customers. For us, it's very obvious that everyone needs neurometria, right? Like everyone understands that we need toothbrush. But consider this toothbrush example, but a hundred years back when tooth, you know, br uh, brushing process and the tool was just invented and introduced to the market. Who used that? It's not everyone. It's the technology uh, early adopters who used to adopt the uh, technologies, uh, the first in the market, right? Those who cared about the health of the uh, of the natives, right? And those who cared about the uh, dependents and kids and relatives, not everyone, even though now we understand that everyone needs to uh, a toothbrush. So the same with neurometria, even though it's obvious value, even though it has um, obvious signs behind, you still be, you still will need to convince people that the technology is something that they need and not every one of them will follow that, the follow the idea of um, neurophysiology and uh, neurotechnology device, right? And then it's still an expensive type of the service. So that will limit your abilities to address those who, who, are, not, who are not paying such a high bills for their kids, right? for the reason they are not wealthy enough or they are not putting that on a top priority. And that's probably the third most important limitation. So every one of us care about their kids. On the surface, that's very simple. We are born to raise our kids, right? But we, our clients are only those who go extra mile with their kids. All of the kids, they go to school. All of the kids, they, you know, they get, level of our attention and level of our efforts, level of our parents' uh, timing. But our clients are those who do extra to that, adding more classes, thinking more, investing more, because that is the part that we're going to make more efficient for them. So it's not everyone who is your customer. Don't try to convince every parent that you meet try to understand if he really matched these three criteria: technology readiness to to pay an extra bills for 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 his kids better future and really dedication you know i call it passionate dedication not like i think about my my kids no you i do extra things for my kids those type of the parents will become your best clients so if you don't feel like that, just let it go. Put the seed inside his brain and uh, sooner or later he will be either returning or not to you, right? 
don't try to convince each and every person you meet not all of them will become your customers. So our benchmark is uh, to have approximately 1,500 tests per, for every 100,000 inhabitants. If you design your sub-franchise uh, network, so that, that's a be benchmark which probably would have some justification behind it, once you will, uh, you know, at the point of, um, reselling we're going to talk with you uh, about this more in detail how we come to this number but this is based on this let's say uh, limitations and circumstances uh, age so our customers are always parents but they bring their kids they bring their heads to be measured uh, the number one um, age group is the preschool age group and even more specific normally this is the second kid so for the first kid we observe that uh, many we have still uh, parents with the first and the only kid for example but the majority is the preschool second plus kid in the family because they already face the mistakes and the bad results of the first kid and they, they are more willing to listen to for advices, for independent opinions for the second kid. They are no longer self, so self-confident that they are the best parents on earth, that they are the best thing that happened in the life of their kid. So the, 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 the biggest group of our clients is the family with the second kid preschool age. If you consider designing your advertisement, grannies should not be forgotten. It's a very often thing, very, very, I mean, many with the capital letter M. It's an often thing that uh, grannies are looking for a kind of our type of the service, and then they push this to their daughter saying that you need to do this and I even pay for it for this. I give this as a, as a birthday gift or Christmas gift because I tell you, he is gifted in mathematics and you are putting him in sport. Believe me, if you don't believe me, I pay for this test, so you go. So grannies are often decision makers or decision pushers. And sometimes they are even paying for that. So that was, a huge observation two years back from, from us. We noticed that we are missing in our advertisement. The, 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 they, they still be able to find us, but by occasion, by chance. And when we focused our efforts on a grannies with the specific uh, uh, visual profiles, of course, that became more efficient. And they are, by the way, they are generating so much noise if you have granny as a customer, you may expect the whole, you know, the whole community from that territory to appear in your office, you know, in, a, in the coming months. They are spreading the word. Family, probably they, sometimes they do the test and they are not so satisfied with the, you know, the stretch between what they think about their kid. And they are less conservative to discuss that even with the friends. Granny is not like that. Even if they see the stretch, that's the, the victory for them. I told you, I told you, they are not doing the right thing for my um, grandson. Something like that. Joke, but that's a very practical. That's a very practical. Okay, the third category, uh, mindful adults. So removing uh, kids from the, uh, from the desk, those who live their life alone, they call themselves mindful people and they are investing in each and every technology to understand themselves even better. So that's a standalone group. Uh, they are very, very technology addictive. They go for yoga. They travel to Nepal. They uh, do the breathing practices two times a day. That kind of persons. They call themselves mindfulness living, right? And they are standalone 
group and they we have the partners who working only with them without touching the kids and by the way very successful you can reach them through uh, cooperation with uh, so-called life coaches uh, life coaches they work with that specific segment of the customers and they could be one of the potential standalone business units for you or business sub sub licenses Okay. So top three requests, which uh, led families to appear in, in your office is number one, outbeating any, any other type of the request is improving kids self-esteem. That's number one search you know, request that they put on Google where uh, we appear as the uh, as the tool to solve improving kids self-esteem they see self-esteem as the main obstacle to find a good profession so he is not he is not going there he is not going to be a doctor because he has lack of self-esteem he is not willing to make a decision he's he he afraid to pick this particular curriculum because he has low self-esteem so low self-esteem seemed by our clients as a fundamental, as a root issue of any of these practical uh, follow-ups, right? So this is number one request. Number two is improving relationships. Any sort of relationship, including parent to kid, kid to friends, kid to teachers, kid to kid, like a, a daughter with son, right? Oh, by the way, uh, that's an interesting observation that uh, uh, request um, bad relationship, how to improve relationship with my daughter is number six in the list. So top six in the list. How to improve my relationship with a son is out of 50. So girls are more troublesome in terms of the relationship uh, with uh, in, inside the family. That's an interesting thing. And number three request is choosing the activity. It's still choosing the activity, which type of sport to choose, which type of hobby to choose, uh, how to develop. Um, I see he's a mathematical, how to develop. I see he's creative, how to develop that type of the of the requests uh, normally they will have. So this is top three requests. And we have a list of top 10. If you will consider to build your context advertisement, we can share with you. So let's talk about the technology. You want to have five minutes break? Okay, so yeah. let's have five minutes break to refill coffee and uh, more energy. Sure. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Shady, are you in the car? No, I am in a place, but this is uh, Marbury. So you see the reflection of the... Ah, yeah, looks like a, like a car. Uh, okay, so... How is, uh, how is uh, Ibrahim? How is what? Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Who is that? The guy uh, from Canada. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, you, I remember you. So there was one uh, based on your reference. The, the pilot, right? Was he a pilot? No. He's, an, uh, he's more into schools, real estate and stuff. Mm, no, I don't have this, uh, this name in, in my mind. Ibrahim Laham, Laham is his family name. Laham. Oh, def definitely not, not, definitely. Ah, no, 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 Ibrahim, Ibrahim, right, right. Ibrahim disappeared for a couple of weeks, by the way, you reminded me. Okay. 
I will I will follow up with him. Yeah, don't I mean don't be pushy. That uh, that need to be a very very uh, mindful decision. Absolutely, Sergi. Uh, we have lots of plans. I actually need to find some time you and I. But once this training is over, let me share with you the the, the progression of everything. I will be need. I will be in Dubai. Uh, in uh, on 16th for 15th of March. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So th uh, that's 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 strange that Peter didn't share with you, but I will be there for the purpose of meeting with him, uh, and uh, he wants me to record some video uh, for the uh, advertisement. He he did he did mention that you plan to come, but he did not confirm a date. Uh, now dates are confirmed. I'm I'm traveling uh, from uh, Uganda through Dubai, and uh, for the purpose of this, I stay there for a couple of days. Uh, for how long? A couple of days. Oh, really? Because I'll be there on the 17th or 18th. Uh, let me check the schedule. It should be like uh, 16th for Tuesday. It's like Tuesday I land and Friday I leave. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then uh, yeah, I'll I land on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then leaving on Sunday. Yeah. So that's all chance okay. to meet. That's great. Good. Perfect. So let's let's move to a, a little bit more technology. Don't forget to start recording, Sergi. It should be already started. Yes, it is. Oh, by the way, you can also do the recordings for whatever parts. So uh, let's talk about the uh, little bit more details uh, of the pillars of the fundamentals. Uh, let me close this. Mm -hmm. of those pillars that we discussed right from the beginning on the very first slide. <clears throat> and the first pillar is, is helping us to measure brain. As being said, there are multiple ways to measure brain. You can measure it by weight of the brain. And there are studies measuring the, the size of the brain, right? And g building some theories and correlations between the how big is the brain and how gifted the brain is. Or, multiple of them. You can measure uh, gray and white matter of the, of, the, of the brain. You also heard about that. And there are also studies and scientific studies which are connecting, which are correlating the proportions of the gray and white matter to giftedness or ungiftedness in such a, in a specific areas. You can measure it by, uh, uh, by MRI. You can measure it by uh, chemical, by molecular. Uh, activities and we use only one of those possibilities which is called electroencephalogram uh, electroencephalog EEG okay english is too long so EEG technology is the technology to measure the electrical signals which are transmitted between one cell to another cell so to make to make any decision our brain needs to need our neurons to talk to each other. Let's, 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 let's make it real practical. If you touch something hot for the first time in your life, you are the kid, your brain is, is skittish. So you touch something hot, the, the teapot, right? Then you get activated the, uh, the, the sensors which are in charge of these hot perceptions. And then it starts to send electrical signals from one to another. One cell is short, another could be a, even a meter long. And it sells to, to the brain to make the decision. And there are multiple ways which, which, uh, which uh, this electrical signal could be transmitted. If that cell is connected to a multiple other cells, the electrical signal will go to either direction. And then back after decision is made. And if the decision is right, and what is right decision if we touch something hot? is to remove the finger, right? Which reduces the pain, um, the pain feelings, right? If the decision by the uh, cells transmitting the signal was correct, then those connections which are used to make correct decision will get stronger. They will get like supported by, uh, uh, they will they will be recognized as a, as a meaningful connections and they will become uh, stronger. 
That's the way our brain gets the new knowledge and the new skill. So you practice doing something in an efficient way and those neurons and those connections between neurons, which were used to make this correct decision, got the rewarded. And the reward comes in a way of making these connections be stronger. And if some of the connections was not used for this effective decision, they will disappear. They will become weaker. And if you don't use it for quite a while, they will just disappear. That is the process called brain plasticity. One of the few fundamental processes inside the brain, the brain plasticity. So that's the way our brain gets um, uh, the ability to accumulate uh, new knowledge and new science and new memories. So you practice doing things and our neurons gets connected. Once they connect it, they are exchanging the electricity. And once you ask the brain to do something a little complicated, if I'm speaking now to you, I'm using out of my brain 500 million neurons simultaneously, right? So to be able to speak 500 millions of my neurons working at the same time, meaning that they are sending their very, very small energy Every neuron is a very, very small energy. But if you make them work together, you can get a higher signal. That is the whole idea of EEG. You get this synchronous signal activity from a multiple uh, amount of the neurons. So EEG cannot, cannot measure the particular neuron. It only can measure the electrical activity of the bunch of the neurons. So it is called generalized activity. It's not the activity of the single neuron or even a couple of the neurons. It's a generalized activity of the millions of the neurons. And that's exactly what we need because every cognition that we consider, creativity, verbal, mathematics, it's the activity which requires millions and millions and hundreds of millions of neurons to work together, to work simultaneously. That's why EEG has so perfect fit. The second fit, the second reason why EEG has a perfect, perfect fit to uh, our measurement is that it's an immediate reaction of the brain. So if you consider MRI technology, someone will ask you to compare why you use EEG, why don't you use MRI? So MRI has the time gap between when you start solving the question and when your brain will need blood for that part of the, of the resource. It, and it's unpredictable. So you probably trained yourself and warmed yourself up before that, right? For that part of the brain and it has enough uh, blood. So you start solving the, the question, mathematical or verbal, but that part of the brain doesn't get activated in terms of MRI because it already has enough uh, resource. And once the resource is used, then you get this highlighted on the screen. EEG works different. So EEG, once your brain needs to solve something, it needs electricity for that. You may not have enough electricity. It always spontaneously um, uh, ad hoc appearing. Once you need to solve, you need electricity. You may not you know, have it uh, in advance. So that's why uh, EEG is a better fit than fMRI in terms of evaluating these uh, cognitive functions. So EEG is, uh, is the technology known for quite a long time. It was discovered by Hans Berger back in 1928. Interesting thing is that on the same page when he uh, wrote the sentence that it is the first time we discovered the electrical signal of the living brain, the same page he wrote, it seems like the signal depends on what brain does. He noticed that the signal form will be different if eyes are closed and eyes are open. And that is considered as the very first neural correlate ever discovered by, by, by scientists. Now it's, things are much more complicated, of course, but that was even that time with that simplified technology. It's very obvious without any artificial intelligence, without any algorithms, even with your eyes looking at the form of the signal, 
to clearly see that if you do different things, your signal is different. The brain acts in a different way, even with that simple technologies. So picture here is this classical EEG diagram has no any meaning except for one thing I want to discuss with you. And what's the difference between the EEG and the neurometria? Basically, there is no, but uh, conceptually, there is. So EEG is a convention, is the agreement bet uh, in, the, in, the, in the clinical, in the uh, health system. So to decode the whole signal, so you have the signal from the brain. It doesn't have any alpha, beta, gamma frequencies. That's just an agreement for the scientific purposes that we will name this subfrequency be alpha, another subfrequency to be beta, and so on and so forth. We may have another type of the agreement, but it was long time ago when these particular agreements and the namings was made. And that is what, what is called EEG. So they take the raw signal from the brain and they appoint particular sub-signals, sub-frequencies to be alpha, beta, gamma, delta, theta. So what we do in terms of neurometry, in terms of the neural correlate sciences that we use, we take exactly the same raw signal since there, are, there is no different signal. The brain is, you know, is out of our convention. He didn't make any type of the agreements with us. Right? So we take the same signal from the brain and we decode the signal to a completely different subfrequencies. Whichever subfrequency we need for that particular matching to that particular neural correlate, which is known from the, from the general science, we extract that subfrequency. We take another uh, neural correlate from our database and we extract then the subfrequency from the raw signal. Right? It may be alpha or it may be any other subfrequency, right? depending on the type of the neural correlate that we work on. So it's a little bit uh, too much to understand, but uh, if you have any sort of this kind of deep discussion with someone who is familiar with EEG, so the, raw, the physical principle what, which we operate with is, this, is the same, but the convention is different. So in clinical, in a hospital, in a health system, they have these EEG subfrequencies, alpha, beta, gamma, tel beta, delta. We have another and multiples of them, most of them without the names, they just, you know, subfrequency on that band and subfrequency on that band. Depends on the type of the neural correlates that we are looking for. Okay. Technology innovator for the for this type of the device is the company called Neurosky from USA. Uh, they invented uh, this uh, ultra compact uh, type of the device uh, back in 2011. So it's quite a mature technology already. It's not something appeared or even developed by us. It's uh, it's already uh, a 10 year on the market. Um, millions of the devices sold for different application scenarios, including medicine, like early epilepsy prediction. You may have early signs of epilepsy for gaming, to control the avatars on the screen, to let them shoot, to let them move. In a smart home solutions, thinking about the light will switch on the light, um, becoming more calm will uh, you know, decrease the light. Still very simple solutions, but yes, they are in the market. In Army, you may find a multiple uh, attempts to, to connect uh, shooting devices, killing devices to these uh, toy devices. Uh, not every Army will, uh, will accept this 90% preciseness, but uh, I know a few Armies which will accept. So uh, technology is widely used it's uh, proven in the multiple areas. Um, it's not something uh, yet to, uh, uh, to find its place, it's already in the market. We use the, the device from uh, um, the company which is called Macrotelect. It's a Shenzhen based uh, company. I know the founder, very nice guy doing the only thing in his life. Uh, he is very addicted to yoga and initially uh, he 
pick the technology of uh, Neurosky to develop uh, a yoga device, yoga supportive device. And that is why it is so compact. So his purpose was the same as us. We need it. We need a super compact device because we work with kids and they will not accept any big thing on their head. And he need to have a super compact device not to interrupt uh, the yoga practice. He need to have something invisible, right? Almost invisible. So that is why that was a good match. And there are multiple other type of the devices which we tried, but that's just the best fit for the purposes that we have. Shady, all good? Okay. Okay, so neural correlates, neural correlates of consciousness or the patterns in the signals that may say us about the giftedness and then giftedness. Neurons have the connections, right? And how many, by the way, how many neurons do we have? You know the number? Yeah, that's 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 okay not to know the number because it's 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 only like five years back it was uh, calcul we calculated the uh, the amount of the neurons but before letting you know that can you guess who will have more neurons uh, an adult person or a kid who will have more neuron cells in the brain probably an adult an adult because he is smarter. Maram, what's your bet? I believe uh, the kids because they're yeah. still working, developing, um, having new fresh cells and so on. Mm -hmm. Probably they have to have more resource than to decide which resource they need. Yeah, could be. Vote from Malaysia comes to I heard before that children, young children have more neuron than adult, but I also have recently that uh, even elderly uh, adults can go, de de still develop neurons. Yeah, so, that's so Asian approach. <laughs> that's very Asian, like everything could be real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, reality is that uh, and that was uh, one of the recent discoveries in the scientists in a scientific um, area is that kid and adult will have the same number of neurons. That's a good news and the bad news at the same time. The good news is uh, that uh, our kids are not smarter than us, as Maram guessed. So 83 billion on average, a kid and adult will have. It's a huge number. But the bad thing about that, that brain is the only part of our body which never gets renewed. Normally, all of our body, every other type of the cell will get its replication in a, on average in six months. So every six months, you get the whole new body ex with all the problems, of course but with, uh, with, uh, with the new cells, except for the brain. So the brain you were born with, you are gonna die with. It's exactly the same physical thing, completely different in terms of the functions, hopefully, but physically that will be the same cells. So they are not going to be replicated. Oh no, in general, there are some exceptions for that, but uh, you may not consider them as a, as a rule. Uh, okay, but we already know that um, it's not the cell which makes us smarter or being more capable, right? Or skillful. It's the connection between cells. It's the connection, right? So then the same question, who will have more connections? Is it a kid or an adult? Let's start with uh, Malaysia. Um, I... Don't know, maybe same, but how to connect, how to connect the cell each other is different. How they connect each other is different. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, again, we hear another sample of variation approach. Okay, so what will Cyprus tell us? 
um, I, I don't know. I believe uh, kids, they can communicate more. They can express themselves more. Um, they don't think sometimes of their emotions. They just say it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, adults, um, sometimes they think much more before saying anything or mm -hmm. before doing anything. It takes them longer. For kids, it's spontaneous. So they just, if they feel something, they might say it directly. Mm -hmm. If they see something, they might say it directly. So they may have directly. different type of the connection. So hard to say about what, what I learned from your answer is not clear who will have more, but definitely they will have different types of the connections, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Shady? Uh, building on what you said, uh, Sergi, as a matter of connections, I'm using the example of the hot pot. Uh, I think adults, they have more, um, more experience, which we call experience. So they, they've been through a lot of more connections. Yeah. So probably adults have more connections than kids. That's why kids need to learn more connections. Yeah, yeah. So kids will have much more connections, 30% more connections than adults. And uh, that's the very, very interesting phenomena. So when, when, you, when you take the young brain and close a look on it, so it's like neurons are very willing to connect to each other. So once just two neurons are next to each other without any practice, without any use, they will get connected. It is called uh, neuroevolution uh, phenomena. So everyone gets connected to any other just for the purpose. Maybe it is efficient, maybe it is not. Let's get connected and let's see. Like like spaghetti, you you put it into the into 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 the uh, into the boiler, right? And everyone which is next to it to to another will get will get connected. And then what happens next? You start using uh, one connection and uh, not using another connection. Those not in use will die, will disappear. Those in use, in effective use, will get stronger and will live for you, with you for all the life. So you start with a bigger quantity, bigger amount of the connections by year six to seven. And you as a parent can feel it. It's like, we always feel like it's so easy for him to start you know, learning French, some area which we may, we, we as adults may not have an advantage of the skill, right? If, if I will start learning Japanese and my daughter will start learning Japanese at, at her eight year old, she probably will be, you know, easy adopting that. I don't have an advantage of skill of Japanese. We only have the brain resource and her brain resources still be more plastic and more connections there available for her to use, right? To start with, they, she has more connections. And then another process is efficiency of the use of the connections. Once you get the learning curve, so you improve your skill. Once you practice playing the guitar, you start using more and more, you increasing your connections involved. But when you reach certain point, the process is different you reduce the quantity of the connections by increasing the efficiency of use. So you actually use lesser amount of the connections for even more advanced things, right? So like this, right? O on the first stage of the development to increase the preciseness of the device of the telephone or the earphones, right? You need to increase its, its, its a size. The bigger, the bigger, the bigger, you add the functions, you add the features, and then the technology reached the level when you are able to add the, the features and the functions and reduce the technology to, uh, to size to that, right? So that's exactly what happens in the brain. So you increase your skills by adding more and more connections. And then at certain point, you reduce the connections by more efficient use of those connections. Right? So adults will have 30% less number of the connections compared to the, to, the, to, to the kids. And the obvious thing we as a parents or as a teachers or psychologist may see is that to start something new, which has no connection to your past skills for kids is always easier than for adults.
because they have these more free resources to be allocated to that, to be associated to that. Okay. So every day, literally every day, new sciences of these neural correlates, of these signals which correspond to giftedness or ingiftedness will appear on a database. So what we do every month, we have a, a technical review, which, which, uh, which is like a preliminary approval. And every quarter we have a general board meeting to uh, uh, approve certain amount of, uh, of the studies to be put in our database. Sometimes it's a few studies we put like a couple of dozens. Sometimes it could reach a couple of uh, hundreds we put simultaneously. So what it gives to the process, it increases the preciseness of the report, first of all. The most important is that it increases the preciseness of the report. But I would say that in general, this, this process, we already almost in the end of, of the, of the of, you know, adding the same type of the neural correlates. We are now seeing that uh, every hundred of new papers that we put will have so minimum impact on the preciseness. So it simply doesn't worth spending resource. So we are more focusing ourselves on finding and collecting the knowledge on uh, discovering more intelligences and more consciousness areas to be adding not the preciseness to the existing report, but to adding more information to the report. So that's probably another five to six years of uh, our next stage of the development, along with adding more technology like eye tracking, as I, as I was mentioning. So that is our part of the process and that is our duty. Oh, by the way, for some reason, we have not discussed that. So the team is uh, not located in Moscow. So when uh, someone asks you if this is a Moscow based company, I would say that this is a Moscow or Russia or rooted company. As of now, uh, our IT and our scientific team, they are not predominantly even in Moscow. So yes, we manage it from here, but we have a team in, in Switzerland. We have a team in, in Austria. We have a team in, in the UK uh, who from time to time or permanently join our efforts to to either work on algorithm or on uh, neural correlates. So it's a, it's a Russia rooted company, but with, with this global uh, globalization of the science and globalization of the technology and transparency of the borders in terms of this science and technology so far, it's hard to say that this is a Russian technology. It is not actually. Okay, so let's see how scoring algorithm will work. So now you have an understand, understanding of this signal, which we record from the brain because of millions and millions of neurons working simultaneously to solve some task. And you have this sample recording within 25, 35 minutes of the test. So you start doing test, you start recording, you finish doing test, you stop recording. And the whole amount of the data is uploaded to the, uh, to the server. What will happen? First thing <coughs> is we have to let algorithm know which part of the signal corresponds to which activity of the brain. To do that, we press buttons inside the, the application. So you start recording and then you start asking the question for example, verbal type of the question. And we need to let server know that this is a verbal type of the task. So you press the button to just to indicate the, the entry point, which will say that, okay, starting from that point, this signal is to be analyzed in terms of finding verbal neural correlates, signs of verbal giftedness, signs of verbal re, uh, resourcefulness. And when you finish verbal exercises, you again press the button to stop recording. When you start, your button will turn to be red. And when you finish, your button will turn to be blue. For every type of the exercise, you have multiple questions, three to five or even, even bigger quantity of the questions, right? 
So the minimum amount of the timing you have to record is 15 seconds for total, uh, for all of the uh, uh, questions of that type. So that means that one question, probably you will record two seconds. Another question you will record like 10 seconds, another five seconds and total you get 15 seconds. Why this matter? Remember that we have this 90% loss or ten, sorry, 10% loss of the preciseness of the signal we discussed in the beginning. To overcome that, the basic principle is that the more you record, the less chance of missing the neural correlate you have. So the, the bigger bulk of the data server will receive, the, bigger, the higher chance that no single correlate will be missing. Still, 15 seconds is uh, is a very very big, um, you know, timing for the for the brain activity. It's a, it's like a universe. It's it's a huge. It's a very big timestamp. And for you to record less than 15 seconds is will happen only if you forget to record something, because normally each question will take you at least 10 seconds. There are very few questions that even require less than 15 seconds to get to get it recorded. But consider that uh, the two things. The first thing is 15 seconds is, 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 is a huge timestamp for the brain because it need, brain works in the milliseconds uh, timeframes making the decisions. The second thing is the more you record, the better preciseness of the report you, you will get. You may skip some questions for the purpose of saving time or if you see like lack of an attention for the kid, you can skip something if you have already recorded 15 seconds. But keep in mind that the more you record, the better result you get, the more precise result you will get. Okay, so now we recorded this. Oh, sorry, then, Sergei. Yeah. Uh, I know we will probably cover this, but curiosity. So if I'm in the verbal tasks, uh, do I start and stop for each question or I start and then I run all the questions and then I stop at the end? Uh, let me tell you like this. So we, we're going to practice how to do it for, with the particular questions. But the general principle is you only record those periods of time when brain is active on this type of the question. It may be the whole page of the exercise. It may be even multiple pages with one recording. For other types of the questions, you probably record one, you know, one inclusion, one part of the exercise. Then you're gonna introduce the rules for the second part of the exercise. And mm -hmm. once you introduce the rules, this is just a talk. This is not him solving some verbal type of the exercise. So that you needn't record. So the basic principle is that you record only periods of time when brain is solving the, this type of the question. And it may be a you know, couple of pages, it may be a single page, it can be part of the page, depending on the type of the question. And you will have these instructions in our practice. Okay, all right. But be better, better understand the principle because that helps a lot. So now you, the brain stopped thinking about the verbal type of the exercises. You have you you told to the algorithm that this is the end of the story of the verbal, and then what happens next is just a noise. So we can drink water, we can have some chit chat with the kid. We may even let him walk a little in the room. If he wants to go to toilet, let him go to toilet. Right. So this is. The, the signal will be recorded, but algorithm will understand that this is useless. It's, it doesn't need to be analyzed because this is something not relevant to what we have to measure and what we have to score, okay? Then we back to the table, back to desk, back to our exercises and we start mathematical, we finish mathematical and so on and so forth. Right, so signal actually will get these demarcation points. What will algorithm do? Let's take this verbal as an example. The algorithm will take this segment and then one by one neural correlates. They doesn't look like this, just to visualize I put like this. 
right? One by one from the verbal part of the database, the first neural correlate and search through the signal, from, through the verbal part of this signal, right? Then another type of the neural correlate for the verbal and search through this verbal part of the signal. And for one neural correlate, we will find it. We put like adding the score. For another, you will not find it, skip it. And then you get to the final score, whatever it is. Could be 78, it has no any meaning yet. We're gonna understand it later, but you will get this score. How many neural correlates you find? It's very simple. Now you, you are able to do your own verbatoria. That's the process being, by the way, put on the, on the patent. It's a high level description of that. Uh, it's more complicated, but still the principal idea is like this. So uh, here you have to um, pay attention to important thing, which is the small thing here, the probability. In the real world, Nothing comes for sure, nothing comes to be certain. If someone tells you that uh, I guarantee that that is true, this is not true. It doesn't work in the, in the real world. In the real world, everything, every decision that you make is always, has always have its own probability. Remember, we discussed that neural correlates themselves. They have the probability, they have the correlation. So with some uh, level of certainty, our study, our research paper will tell that, okay, if we see that pattern, that this is the probability. Now, this is the probability which links us to the resourcefulness in verbal area. But there is another type of the decision that we make. In, a re in reality, you, you never find a 100% match between the uh, neural correlate and the signal, between, between this and this. It is always a decision. Does it look enough matching to put plus to add the score? And it, it is also a source of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the mistakes. That's to be, of course, honest and because we have to be transparent and honest. So the, the algorithm makes the decision if the neural correlate that we have on the database does look enough matching to the signal that we receive. From the, from the brain to make the scoring decision. Making this decision, we may make two types of the mistakes. One is missing the neural correlate if it is in the signal, but we didn't find it. Another type of the mistake that we may make is that we detect NCC in the signal where is no NCC, right? And that's another important uh, justification for the whole idea, the more you record, the better preciseness you will get. So out of that 30, uh, 30 minutes is something reasonable for enough precise report, even though the minimum required will be only how many? Seven intelligences multiplied by 15 seconds, only two minutes, right? Only two minutes is a minimum requirement but we follow the process of the testing, which will actually give us approximately 30 minutes of the recordings, just for the purpose of the preciseness, to avoid any sources, to mitigate uh, the sources of the mistakes that we have. And there are other sources of the mistakes, we're gonna discuss it as well. By the way, if you press, if you forget to press the button, what will happen? So you start recording verbal task, and then you finish, uh, solving the task and you forgot to press the button, what will happen? It will take other, uh, other tasks that are not designed. Uh, no? what, we, what will happen is that, okay, let's, let's guess we move this, uh, we, 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 we stop solving a verbal task and then we start chit chatting and we just forgot to press the button and then all of a sudden, oh, I forgot to press the button and I press it somewhere here, somewhere here, right? This time, that means that algorithm will analyze these parts to find the neural correlates of the verbal giftedness. And all of a sudden it may find it, 
but our brain was not in charge of doing verbal exercises. It was in charge of, you know, chit chatting and drinking water. But still algorithm will think that that was the part of be brain being active, solving verbal type of the question, and it may add the score for that. Right. So pressing the button in correct time is has its also crucial importance uh, to the uh, report accuracy, preciseness. Okay, so let's talk about test exercises that is being uh, used to activate the brain. So neuropsychology is our third pillar, is a scientific area to uh, build the mapping, the functional mapping of the brain. So what the psychology is, um, psychology is the science which discovers the external um, behavior driven by our uh, internal psychological world, right? So uh, psychology studies our behavior, how we behave in a, cer in a certain situation, right? So how person would react to that type of the uh, things happening in his life. Uh, neuropsychology is the sub, sub uh, area of the classical psychology, uh, focusing on a slightly different thing. They are looking for the sources of these decisions, sources of efficiency or inefficiency inside the brain. So what part of the brain is in charge of that cognitive area? what physical part of the brain is in charge of another function that we or uh, think that we can do in real life so they built these mappings and to do so they have to have a tool to activate one by one 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 to another different parts of the brain and that's exactly what we need we need to activate the brain one part by another one by one so that is why neuropsychology uh, appeared on our radar. Oh, no, it's not sudden because my sister, uh, she's a doctor in uh, psychiatry and she was the, actually the, the first one to tell me when, when I was doing my first attempts to find the technology, a magic device, which will tell me the giftedness of my son. She said that uh, neuropsychology is the area you have to start um, considering because they are doing roughly the same thing for different purpose. And uh, what we take from them is those exercises. So whatever type of the exercise you have, <clears throat> I have it in Russian, but let me show you something like, uh, yeah, for example, this one. you have the exercise asking the brain, can you find if this figure is one of those four figures here, right? So you activate the specific resources of the brain, right? Matching this one to a group of this one is uh, uh, activating the creativity, space and time resource of the brain. And that is not developed by us, it is developed and proved that it is activating creativity type of the resource by uh, neuropsychologists. So that is the use of the neuropsychology, but still <clears throat> there is a one gap that we have to fill. And what is the gap? The gap is between the function of the brain, like verbal function or mathematical function of the brain and the activity, because we are not doing verbal activities. We are not doing creativity activities. We are doing sports, we are doing crafts, we are doing you know, math, uh, algebra studies, we are doing uh, geometry studies or chem uh, chemistry. What is chemistry? Is it verbal or creativity or mathematical? What is that? If we consider 3D um, printing or um, design activity like uh, robot design, what is that? Mathematical or kinesthetic? How to build uh, the link between seven intelligences and uh, endless variety of the activities. And for that purpose, we use 
multiple intelligence approach brought by uh, Gorvard Gardner, the American living professor who spent his life in uh, understanding the difference between IQ and the talent. He was curious about the simple fact, how knowing that my IQ is high, what to do with that? What is the practical use? If my IQ is high, what should I do? And the second thing he was curious about, if, if one person IQ is low, how come he can achieve such a high you know, results in a particular areas? And studying this phenomena, he discovered that uh, there is no general intelligence. There are multiple intelligences independent from each other. Uh, in one of each, you may be talented and you may be gifted, and in all of the others, you may be like a zero, having no resource or having no appetite. And in his classical study covers these seven intelligences, verbal, mathematics, music, creativity, kinesthetic, self-awareness and people awareness. And he stated that anything that we do in our normal life, any activity, that, any class that we study, any hobby that we consider, any profession, any job duty, is the combination of use of those resources. And let me give you one example. Let me change the, the earphone. Sorry for interruption. Okay. So, for example, if I now speak to you, it does seem to be a, a, a verbal type of exercise for the brain, but not only verbal, actually, because I have to plan my schedule of the, uh, of the training for two days. So that's a kind of logical. So at, not, not as much as verbal, but logical resources still involved to plan and to control the schedule, right? Then uh, obviously I use the gestures I, I, I see it control my position. So it, it's a little bit kinesthetic task for the brain. It's not the top priority. Top priority is still a verbal, but I use other type of the resources of the brain and other intelligences to support uh, the main activity. Let's, let's take another type of the, uh, of the activity, sport, for example. Sport does sound to be kinesthetic. Any type of sport will require you to control your body. But is it only about your body? It is not. It does require something else. It requires you to be very self-esteem. If you consider sport as a profession, right? You have to not to give up when you fail. If you win, also be strong to, you know, to work hard later, even after you win the gold medal. And the people awareness also need to be very high. All good? Okay. Uh, people you awareness. Were, you were breaking, so you're you're back again to normal. But uh, your, your your voice was breaking a bit. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I noticed that. There is some confusion. So doing sport is not also not only about the kinesthetic. It requires other type of the resources. And even more uh, uh, example, which is more relevant to our kids, uh, consider algebra and geometry. Algebra requires you probably only mathematics, but geometry, which considered to be like another part of, uh, of algebra or another part of mathematics requires a completely different type of the resources. It requires much less mathematics and much more of creativity space and the, and the time awareness and then also kinesthetic little higher requirement if i use the foreign language and I, if i study foreign language it's not a purely verbal exercise it's a verbal plus music or verbal plus creativity uh, resource involved if i um i don't know if i play piano is it a music no it's kinesthetic it's a hearing plus kinesthetic if I compose music for a piano, it's a 
top priority music and kinesthetic probably even very very low skill and low requirement you may compose a music without being able to play it right so those are examples which shows us how do we mix our resources to be more efficient in one area and less efficient in another area so anything that we do is the combination um, of the priorities i used of uh, building the cocktail, the mix of, of your resource. And if your resource of the brain, the cocktail that you have, the priorities that you have will match to uh, the requirement of this activity, that is called harmony. That is called this activity matches your brain resource. And let's talk about that. So first, let's get introduced with uh, what particular intelligence is for. And you see here on the slide, very strange name saying five applied edge meaning. What does, if, if we measure seven, why here we only discuss five? The thing is that those seven has two groups inside, which are different fundamentally. Five applied, we call verbal, mathematics, music, creativity, and kinesthetic, has the language. There is some application. There is something you can do with this, with this resource, and you can deliver that to the world. Verbal, for example, you can speak, right? Or you can write, or you can read. And if you compare it to understanding myself, what is understanding? Understanding is just a knowledge even to the level of the feeling. How do I feel about myself? How, what do I think about myself? It doesn't have the deliverable to the world. It's an emotional intelligence. So knowing myself and understanding people is an emotional intelligence. And five others are called applied intelligences. So they have some practical applications of use. That's the first difference, why we separate them in a two different groups. The second thing is that they are different in terms of stability. Five applied intelligences you born with, you likely to, to die with. So a resource allocation is like a fixed one. We now have a multiple, our own studies of um, test and retest, so-called. So you measure it once and then in a couple of years you measure it again and then again. So with uh, uh, highly, uh, high preciseness, we may guarantee that applied areas measured at four year old will be the same at 10 year old, right? Priorities will be the same. But for emotional intelligence, it's completely different. It is very unstable until uh, our teenager time frame, like until 12, it may change in a half a year to be opposite. Then it becomes more stable in a teenager, like 12 plus uh, till 18. And then it becomes as stable as applied when we are adult. So it's hard to change our emotional sphere when we are adults. It's still possible, unlike for applied, but it's just harder. So you may no, no longer read a good book and uh, have a good friend and uh, have you know some bright emotions to change your emotional intelligence to be in another state you have to invest more time doing more practices with the psychologist reading more books to change your self-awareness and people awareness you become more stable so they, they applied and emotional intelligences they uh, have to these fundamental differences and they also have the practical difference so applied intelligences, we use to match two activities. Out of applied uh, intelligences, we may understand which hobby to choose, which uh, uh, curriculum subject will be more comfortable or less comfortable to this particular brain. Out of the emotional intelligence, we extract the leadership styles the soft skills, not the hard skills, but the soft skills. How suitable are you to become a leader? How comfortable for you will be that leadership approach, right? 
if you are the leader, what type of leadership you will follow. So two different use of these uh, different uh, intelligences. So let's talk about uh, each uh, of intelligence and starting with verbal. First thing to remember, verbal intelligence or verbal type of the resource of our connectome is used only for native language. If I speak foreign, if I speak, uh, if I study foreign language, it never has the priority use of verbal. So that is why we have to test person in his native language, in his mother tongue language, or the language which is, which he is as fluent as, as with his mother tongue language. Because verbal type of exercises need to activate verbal part of the brain and it is only guaranteed in case of testing in a, in a native language or language which is almost similar level to the native language. <clears throat> what if, what is the, the level, what is high level of verbal resource and the lower level of the resource? What does it mean? That means the processing power, how easy for, for the brain to understand the complexity of the language. If we have more resource, like a, like a computer, consider brain as a computer with a CPU, with the processors. The more resource you have, the higher complexity task you may put on it. The longer sentences, the more comprehensive stories, right? You can memorize longer, you can express with a, with a more comprehensive words and a, comprehensive sentences, because your processing power, processing capacity is higher. If you have lower resource, then vice versa. To reach like aha moment, right, to, to solve it, you will probably need more time because your processor is lower, it needs a longer period of time. And it's probably will be more comfortable to use more simple words and shorter sentences and shorter texts to remember, right? Mathematics, always perceived by, uh, by us as a counting ability, but mathematics for the brain is <clears throat> counting and logic. So finding relationship between objects is also part of our math mathematical um, brain resource. So when we consider one boy or girl being tested with, uh, with a resourcefulness in mathematics and mom, <clears throat> mommy is saying that she is or he is so bad in, in algebra, then probably she will be very good to become a, um, I don't know, detective, right? To find the logical solutions for a complicated, uh, complicated puzzles. So let's try doing this with this uh, girl or boy. Not necessarily mathematics will be applied to counting, to accounting or calculations. It's also about logic. So two parts of mathematical use of, the, of this resource is counting and logic. Logic often for, forgotten. So music, a very confusing area because many families and many parents, including myself before I, I, I you know, started to dive deep in this area. For, for me, music was like playing piano, playing violin. If, if I can transfer from my ear to my hands sound precisely, that for me was an indication of the musical giftedness, but it is not. So music is the ability to use music as a language, as an interaction language. So if you get the knowledge out of the music, if you express yourself with the music, then this is a musical giftedness. It's not, it's not necessarily playing, it's, but it, it is always a, uh, an emotional approach to the music, right? So I listen to the music and I understand the feelings. I understand the, the, uh, the circumstances of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the story behind the music. If I listen, if I myself, if I listen to the music, I don't have any clue 
it's just a nice melody for me. It may have some emotional response in me, but I cannot decode the music to become an information for me. Those talented, those gifted, those resourceful in this area, they are able to extract actually the information out of the music. And they are able to put information out of their brain and out of their emotion to the music, to encode it to the music. If, if, if when I go to opera, I see like hundreds, not the hundreds, but dozens of the instruments playing simultaneously. I cannot imagine what is decoded, what is encoded there. But it was done for the purpose, not just to be an, a nice sound. It, it is an information. So music is uh, uh, music resourcefulness and music intelligence is, is using sound as a language. It's a composing. It's always about the composing and decomposing, extracting the information, filling the, the music. Right, so don't get confused. Uh, there is another application of the music, by the way, is uh, studying foreign language of uh, non-native, uh, non, non-similar to your native language. For example, if I will start uh, learning Chinese, which is quite far from Russian, uh, or if you will start learning Chinese, you will start using your musical resource because our brain has no idea that uh, Chinese is a language. Uh, brain doesn't have an idea where is the sentence, where is the letter, where is the word. It's just the music. And what brain will do is take this fragment of the music and with the teacher help, associate its, this musical sample to the name of the object. So that part of the music will be whiteboard, that part of the music will be mobile phone, that part of the music will be eyeglass, and so on and so forth. And later on, accepting this and accumulating that knowledge, it will become part of our verbal resource. But we start learning this type of language, which are far from our native language, by using musical resource, because that's how we perceive it. We, we receive it as a music, then assign this musical sample to some particular object. Okay, so when, when you are asked, by the way, uh, a very frequent question from uh, our parents, should I go and study at start learning uh, foreign language at five year old or wait? The first point in the report for you to get answer is the musical intelligence. If it is resourceful, if it is number one or number two or number three, that may be considered. If it is not, then probably follow the, uh, the general timeline for that. Let's skip creativity for the purpose you're going to know uh, two minutes later. Discuss the kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is like simple. The first application of kinesthetic is sport, of course. But it is not, also, not only about the sport. It's also about crafting, for example. It's about the sculpture. It's about be, to be a surgeon, to cut the meat, right? So anything which require you to control your body. If you are an actor in the theater, you also need that. If you are an artist, right? To make a very nice paintings, you also need a kinesthetic. Even if you write a book, you have your verbal class and you write, uh, you write something, you know, write down the, uh, the words and the sentences fo following uh, your teacher. You still use this uh, uh, kinesthetic uh, type of the resource to control and very precisely control your small movements of, of, of the hands, right? That is what kinesthetic stands for. Crafts, arts, jewelry, sports, painting, crafting, uh, theater. Let's talk about the creativity. Now you have, we have covered four out of five applied. Shady, missing. Shady with us. I got disconnected.
Maram, am I disconnected? Uh, Shadi, are you there? Seems like uh, he is not here. Uh, yeah, Serge is. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just had a business call. I'm very, very sorry oh, about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's okay. So, yeah. well, sorry, what was, what was the question? I'm uh, sorry about no, that. No, 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 no question. I, I, I thought that I'm out of the connections be because I was. Uh, Pinging you no. and you are not uh, reacting, so no question. No, no, it just took me a minute. I was with the kinesthetic part, and then uh, I, I had to think. That's okay. Well. That's okay. That's okay. So now we covered four out of five applied intelligences, and uh, in common, what they have, they have some language. Verbal has word as a language. Mathematics has number as a language. Music, sound, kinesthetic movement, and what is creativity? Creativity is creating something, imagining something, right? Thinking of something new. But what is the language for that? Let's play one, uh, one, uh, one simple game. Let me ask you to guess your uh, house, the house that you, you live now. Just, just imagine it. So raise hand if you, if you did. Okay, Maram, did you? Yeah. Okay, okay, very good. And now imagine your house, the same house, being on a moon. Could you? Logically, no, but um, if you imagine it, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. now just imagine the thing that you never seen. Got it. You, you imagine something new, you created something new. And yeah. that, is, that is the, uh, the, uh, the essence of the creativity. So you use the, the memory and the building blocks out of the memory to create something which doesn't exist. But now let me ask you, for example, Maram, how would you... Express me this uh, this uh, this object that you just imagined, the house on the moon. Describe it. Yeah, it's um, it's a big house with a garden, um, with a duplex, uh, with a pool. Um, very uh, mathematical. Very, it's a uh, just notice that this is a mathematical description, even though you use words. But in just one sentence, you use big, which is mathematical. You use two. I even two. didn't notice what. I noticed that this is a mathematical description. If I probably will ask uh, Malaysia to describe that, I expect that that will be a very Asian style with a lot of details and less numbers and less comparisons. That will be more verbal, right? And probably if I would ask Shady, to deliver to the world what he imagined being his house on the, on, on the moon. He would probably take a piece of paper and sketch it because that will be easier for him. That will be the language of his creativity to express the creature into the world. So that's the, the, the difference between creativity and the other, um, resource, uh, the other areas. Once you see the kid with number one priority in creativity, you always search for the second one because that will be the most effective application for him of his creativity. Let's, let's talk creativity plus verbal. What could be the activity rec recommended for that brain? Creativity number one, verbal number two. Go and try yourself in poetry, for example, right? Why not? You are creative and uh, word is the, 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 uh, the language that you use to express your creativity. Go and try yourself in poetry. Okay, creativity and mathematics. IT, creating some technology probably. IT. Software yeah. development, software design, right? It could be a fundamental science, right? Not the applied science, but the fundamental science when you create a new knowledge out of the existing knowledge. 
great than creativity plus music? Composition? Yeah, composer, creativity plus kinesthetic. Uh, that could be a ballerina or some dance or theater or some new. Right, yeah. artisting, yeah, painting uh, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. So uh, creativity could be seen as a resource for, as a resource support for any other type of the areas. So creativity, um, having creativity number one is always, I would not say best scenario, but very, very resourceful scenario. Let me ask you one question and then um, explain you why I ask this. Um, can you guess what chess playing, um, which resource that will require from us to be effective? How do you think? To become a world champion in a chess, which priorities you will put in terms of the intelligences? What is number one and what is number two, number three? If I may start? Yep. I think math. Mathematics. And number two? Uh, more about, uh, yeah, maybe creativity as well. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good starting point. Malaysia? I, I thought the same. Number one is math, and next is creativity. And <laughs> Third is, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> maybe bubble. Um, what one? Ah, verbal. Yeah, oh, yeah, probably. Mara, what you what do you think? Well, I thought first of all creativity because you're gonna put a plan, you're gonna find the right way, and then math to start counting how mm -hmm. you will work on it. Um. um and then maybe uh, the last one is verbal. A verbal, yeah. And probably even you don't require any any third or fourth. It's hard for us to to okay. guess what else needed except mathematics and creativity. And that's a good because approach. Because you don't need art, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what Harvard, uh, what uh, what uh, Gardner has discovered in his studies is that we start playing chess by using mathematical approach. We can calculate the strategies, we can forecast the, uh, the movements, but that will only work to the certain level of the complexity of the game, of the, of the, of the scenario of the game. Once you need to overcome that, mathematics has no use. I mean, completely no use. And you only play with the creativity part of your resource. And he brought a very profound example in his book. He, he, he invited the chess players, the world leading chess players, and he asked them to, uh, to do the, 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 the very simple exercise. He put uh, the chess scenario on the board for five seconds, asking them to memorize it. Then he removed it after five seconds and asked to rebuild it. And then, so his point of interest was not the success rate. His point of interest was to discuss how do they memorize? What is the approach that they use? What is the logical approach, how to memorize? And what they uh, expressed to him was completely unmathematical. They said that when you put this game scenario in front of me, I felt like, I felt like it was a little bit of tension here, a little bit of green here, a little bit of warm here, right? So they didn't memorize the, uh, the numbers, the positions in whatever manner. They memorized the emotional, the, the colorful scheme of the, of the game. And when, they, when, when he put a blank board in front of him, they expressed the same with the only language that they have. And the language is chess. So uh, yeah, chess is the only sport which doesn't require kinesthetic, by the way. Not known any other uh, sport to, 
to have uh, no requirement to kinesthetic. Okay, so I strongly recommend you to purchase this book, Frames of Mind. It has already multiple reincarnations uh, and a couple of names. This is the fundamental, the 28 years back, 20, no, 26 years back, uh, version seven intelligences which we still stack with he has more recent research with uh, even 40 type of the intelligences but we don't have any uh, tools to measure it since you need to have the neural correlates of this ecological thinking but there is no such neural correlates of ecological thinking and whatever other intelligences he may discover so we work with this fundamental approach of seven intelligences. Highly recommend you to purchase this from Amazon. It, it's worth reading. It's a very practical, it's, uh, it's still scientific, but out of that, you will be able to discuss so many practical things and so many practical stories. And it, the book itself is built almost exactly the, the way that we built Neurometria using neurotechnology, and neurophysiology and neuropsychology and plus some other things. So highly recommend you to spend time, it, it, it worth your attention. Okay, so let's talk about one important thing uh, which you probably already understand why we cannot compare um, TQ diagrams. You know what TQ is, talent quotient. This is the the diagram that we have on uh, as a scoring result. Remember, we have the scoring algorithm, right? We receive the signal and then uh, algorithm will search for neural correlates. And let's guess for kid number one, scoring algorithm has found like 12 signs of verbal giftedness, 10 signs of uh, mathematical resourcefulness, this is the quantity for the music, for creativity, for kinesthetic. So is that clear? So this is just a scoring result. So this is just quantity of the neural correlates that we found in the signal. Understood? Yeah. Okay, good. Shady, thanks. And then we have another kid coming to to do the test and then we recorded the signal after all the tests and the scoring algorithm will find only five neural correlates in his verbal only four in his mathematics only three in music only one in creativity only in two in kinesthetic so less signs of giftedness less signs less patterns of uh, um, resourcefulness in every area how, you, how do you think, who is smarter, kid number one or kid number two? Just raise two or one. Who is smarter, number one or number two? Um, it's, a, it's a trick question, but ideally, from what you see, it would be probably kid number one. Kid number one, yeah, it will, it will have more neural correlates, more signs of this resourcefulness. And that's actually true. But what you will see on the report, you will never see who is smarter. So what will algorithm do? Algorithm will take the highest ranked uh, area and assign it to a highest point on the diagram. So every diagram that you will receive on the report will have this point, which we call 95. It was long time ago when we used the, uh, the numbers on the report and the number was 95. It, and behind this 95, one kid may have a hundred of neural correlates observed, another may have only 10 neural correlates observed or even less. Right, and you never know. 
what this number or what this point will tell to, to you and to a parent, that this is the most resourceful area compared to all other areas. If you take diagrams of your son and your daughter, and both will have 95 for the verbal, you may not say who is smarter than uh, in, the, in the verbal. You may, on, you may only say with confidence that verbal type of exercises are the most comfortable to their brain. This would, would be the easiest for them to achieve, but how far they may go and how fast they may go. They may go very, with a very, very different uh, pace. What next algorithm will do? It will take the lowest quantity of the area with the lowest quantity of the neural correlates found and assign it to a point called 15. Again, it is long time ago, we used the numbers. So uh, now in the modern version of the report, you just see it with the red color. And red means that it, it doesn't say that this is an area where you cannot perform or you cannot achieve. It just says that compared to the other areas of, uh, of the brain, to, of, the, of the connectome, that will has the least resource. You see, the kid number one in creativity will be three times more resourceful, three times more capable than kid number two. But even for him, this type of the activity will be less comfortable. And that's the only thing you may judge about looking at the TQ diagram. What is more comfortable and less comfortable and not how smart is uh, the kid compared to the other kids in this or that area. Next, algorithm will assign green color to resource areas which has number one, number two, and number three priorities for the purpose uh, you're gonna understand next slide. And in the middle, number four will have uh, this kind of yellow color. So I hope uh, this is a little bit too much again, but that's very important to understand that we may not compare any two TQs, any two diagrams and why? Because the same digit on the diagram may reflect a completely different resourcefulness. That's not our purpose and not, this is not our mission to uh, tell to parents who is smarter and who is loser. You may go to take any other type of the uh, exams or assessment um, tests, but not verbatoria. Verbatoria tells to each and every kid and each and every family that this is the, this is the comfortable road for you to go. We don't know how difficult it will be. It's probably only like five neural correlates or it could be 50 neural correlates. We just know that this is the easiest way for you to go. And that's the concept uh, which appeared, which drove us to um, introduce this sub-brand called Footbee. Footbee sounds like a football, but it has no correlation to football. We want every kid fit be on the road which he may not want to change. So this is the easiest path in his life. It could be yet difficult. It could be yet, you know, not, not, not a award winning, but that's the easiest. Take, an, take my son as an example. Whatever road he will choose, he will never achieve like a, like a gold medal or whatever because of, of, of the sickness. But still among all of the roads that I may design for him, that I may choose for him, one or couple of them will be easiest, more comfortable. And that's applicable to each and every. So what we do, we say, which is the easiest, which is the comfortable way for you, right? Uh, Sergi, so basically what you're saying is uh, during the test, we can capture the brain powers, but we do not position them in the report. 
Is that yeah. correct? Yes, yes, exactly. That was a very hard discussion with Habib. He was pushing me like a hell to output this information. Who is smarter? Because this is the demand from the parents. And yes, it's a huge demand from the parents because competition is the nature of the, of the modern society and the modern economy. This is the way we design. We operate, yeah. Yeah, but that's just not our, our with respect to this competition, with respect to, with re, uh, to the requirement that parents face. This is not the issue that we solve. We just solve a different type of issue. We solve an issue for every untalented kid to say what is his talent. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Um, at least uh, the first two uh, tests we will do, we'll do for our kids. So I need to know this, yeah? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, let's yeah. move. Please. Understanding the score, uh, it, it's quite simple, very visual um, way of rep representing the, uh, the, the scoring result, but it has a very important things for you and very sensitive things to you to, to feel. So now you understand that we have like five applied areas, verbal, mathematics, music, creativity, sports. Creativity here, you see if fulfilled with the green, which is the highest priority. This is sports and crafts, which is kind of static, easy to understand. This is the second priority, the third, the last, and the fourth, okay? So the first thing here is to um, avoid using high resource and low resource. The best way and the only way that we encourage you to, to talk about this diagram is higher and lower least and um, and uh, and the most always a comparative because that's an internal benchmarking so we do compare one resource for one a intelligence area to another areas right it's not like you fool with the creativity resources and no one can have more than you no it's just your brain has uh, allocated more resources to creativity compared to any other uh, intelligence area, right? So that's why it's a bit sensitive to use higher lower rather than high and low because low means I cannot, right? I have no resource, no. Lower is just lower than the other but low may be still quite a lot, right? It, it could be an elephant, right? In terms of the resource. So higher, lower, this comparative wording is a sensitive thing. Develop a habit to introduce the TQ diagram using this higher and lower resource uh, wording. Now you can see here uh, a strange dots. Do you have any idea what, what dots stand for? The pink dots? Okay, um, so when you do the test, after you finish the test, and you already pressed the button to finish the test, it's already there. You may ask your parents, so dear mommy or dear daddy, what is your estimate of the priorities or, or comfortable intelligences or resourcefulness of your kid in, in this and that intelligence area? What is your priorities you pay attention to? And here, for example, this is the real uh, measurement. This parent uh, definitely said that number one priority for him which he uh, estimates out of his um, son or daughter is music, right? And the least priority is sports and crafts. This is something out of his attention. And you see obviously now that there are situations which we call stretches. So the difference between brain resourcefulness and the parents' priorities, what that leads, the stretch, the uncomfortable um, situation always leads to a stress, right? If my, my parent will require me to deliver a result in music, yes, I will deliver because he spends money, he spends energy, he invites me best teachers. 
I deliver result in music, but I'm feel I feel myself more comfortable with something else because this is more suitable to my brain. And I, you know, I finish my music classes uh, with happiness and joining some other activities. And I try to escape from family, right? I'm getting disconnected with my mommy because she's putting attention to something which is no attention for me, even though I'm delivering the result, right? So you finally find the family in the position of, I, I have, um, I lost the connection to my kid, right? And we are looking at all the psychological sources for that, but that may be a very practical route. And the practical route is that you require him to do something which he can deliver, but still uh, not the most happy, right? He is, he is finding some other points of interest. Which point of interest? Take an example on this stretch. This parent said that kinesthetic type of the activity is something we don't provide support, we don't provide our attention. Meaning that if this is an early uh, childhood, uh, this brain wants to play Lego, for example, and we didn't buy it simply because we don't think it's, it's, uh, it's something we, need, we have to support. We, it's not something we have to spend our attention and spend our cash on. Right, we removed it from our attention. We don't provide the resource. When when the, this uh, kid delivers some result, we don't you know praise for this result. This is something occasional. I this is this has no meaning for this parent, right? For for a kid, it has a lot of meaning. It makes him happy. It makes him comfortable. Right? This is the most use of his brain power, but parent will not praise it. For parent, it's out of his scope of the support, of the appraisal, of whatever, of resource provisioning. And that again will, uh, will result in, uh, uh, in a kid losing uh, you know, connection with their parents. They don't respect what I am into. They don't pay attention. They are bad parents, right? That's so very in, this, in this example, there is a stretch in music, there is a stretch in sports, there is a stretch in creativity. Probably they're quite focused in this example again in the verbal, and maybe second best would be math and logic, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we start reading the report, that's the heart of the report. That's the, that, that's the, that's the place where we like spend like first 30 seconds. And two things we discuss within this 30 seconds is highest and the lowest, introducing the idea of the higher resourcefulness and lower resourcefulness, not meaning that being genius or stupid. Uh, and the second thing is the stretch. I mean, we don't say that you have these problems. We just focus your attention that there is a stretch between the resourcefulness and priorities, which probably you manage quite efficiently. But consider yourself, uh, if the typical, by the way, here, uh, what, they, what she will tell you, she will tell mommy, she will tell how come that music is so low because she's doing so well. She already won the gold medal in the school, right? You know, in piano, in whatever. How come she's so low? Uh, she, um, uh, you, you say it red. The, the, not the issue, but the point is, if you allocate the same of your attention, the same of your time, the same of your resource, your parent attention to any other area, to mathematics, to verbal, to sports, to creativity, just imagine how much she can achieve. If with the lowest resource, she achieved that much. That's what it, what it is about, right? So if you see the stretch, give this example. Imagine yourself applying the same amount of your efforts to more resourceful area. She will be more happy, first thing. And second, in the end, she will achieve more. It doesn't mean you have to stop music. It's simply not about it. It's simply about bringing more harmony in the life of your kid. More efficient use of his resource. That's a very classical discussion you're going to have about the music. Music is a pain point for any girl. Girl equal music, boy equals sport. 
and that's always in a discussion in the room. How old are your kids, by the way? Uh, Rafaela is nine, nine and a half. Uh, Elias is turning almost six in July. Elias, uh, boy or girl? Boy, boy, Elias. Uh -huh. So let me guess who is in sport and who is in music. Okay. <laughs> boy is in sport and girl is in music. Uh, the girl is definitely on the guitar. Uh, he, uh, honestly, we still did not discover, but he's more inclined towards uh, crafts, building, playing mm -hmm. with Lego, drawing. Uh, he's, he's creative on that side. And music for him is also important, but he does not play. He sings along. He makes mm -hmm. up the words. Yeah. But his and mom you... is better off to talk about him than me, really. <laughs> Do you have any 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 argues between uh, you and Maram about uh, kids' potentials and priorities, or you always like uh, very solid in your judgments? The same no, parts. I th I think we we're always questioning: Are we doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. That's 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 always yeah. the case, Serge. We have in, in the beginning when when we just started this. There was uh, one approach. I always asked two parents to give the questionnaire. So on, on the diagram, which looked different, we had opinions from mommy and from daddy. And in yes. half a year, I stopped doing that for a very simple reason. It was always a conflicting, like 50% of the cases, we have two parents unable to reach an agreement, looking at the same kid, one will say that mathematics is his priority and mommy will say, no, kinesthetic is his priority. And that's so obvious for both of them. And they leave the office, they leave the cabinet making kind of agreement. And then daddy calls me, okay, that was an agreement for the purpose of calming down the situation. But my real opinion is that, can you correct it? And then five minutes, Mommy is calling, okay, we reached an agreement, but my real opinion is that. So uh, I, I, I thought that that moment that my purpose is to bring more harmony in, in family, not the conflicts. And uh, I said, okay, enough is enough. Even if you s uh, skip this questionnaire, it's okay. You have the buttons to skip it. Just in case you want this visualization of, of what you think versus what, what resources, only in this case provide that's quite useful but if you decide to skip you skip yeah 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 no we're we're extremely eager really we're we're passionate about this and honestly i'm telling you uh, it's worth everything to start with our own kids uh, sergi so uh, absolutely yeah. you know having this having these real examples and the not even the real the personal examples will help you quite a lot Disputing with these uh, examples will give you even, 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 even more efficiency. When you, you know, pass these several phases of not accepting the result, how come I cannot be a bad parent? I cannot be that, you know, why it says this is a stretch. This is the first phase. And then the second phase, you live with that. We have in Russia the sentence, <clears throat> I don't know if you have it similar in Malaysia or in uh, in uh, in the uh, in Cyprus. The thing once thought may never be unthought again. So if you have a seed in your brain, if if ever in the point of time someone will tell me that my kid is talented in uh, in kinesthetic, even if I reject it, I start thinking about that. I start noticing something which I didn't notice before. And we have so many cases when parents, they are returning us uh, a year after saying that, okay, I was rejecting the result 12 months back, but now it's a point when I want to discuss with you how to live with that, because I obviously see that there is something I was missing. And you will, you will have your own practice about that. There will be multiple and multiple cases like this. People rejecting, living with that, and accepting. It takes time to accept that you were, you was you were missing something. It's a very very hard decision, you know, to 
to accept that I was not the best parent for my kid. Okay, so let's see uh, more formally how to match the uh, measurement result to the activities which we briefly discussed when I introduced you the whole idea of uh, I'm speaking using uh, verbal and uh, logical and kinesthetic type of the intelligences at the same time. So let's guess we have someone, one kid measured with this result, You're just for the purpose of uh, presenting the data for your understanding. It's not like diagram, it's like the, the bars. So verbal is 95, you can see it, right? Verbal. Logic is the lowest resourceful area, 15. Then the second priority is kinesthetic, this one. The third priority is music. And the fourth is creativity. And this is self-awareness and people awareness. For the moment, we just not discuss it. Let's focus on this on the five applied areas. And let's ask, imagine we are asked by uh, the parents the question, if it's good for this kid to go to a theater studio, right? How to answer this question? To answer that question, we have to understand what is required to be successful in theater studio. And we invited the people in charge of developing that type of the skills, professionals with the background of working with kids and collected the opinions from them. So what they, what they believe, number one, number two, number three priorities of the intelligences, which are required to be successful in, um, uh, in a theater studio. And the average opinion from them was that verbal is number one, Definitely. Number two and number three without uh, specific priority is music and kinesthetic, right? Logic, we don't care. Who cares logic or creativity in theater studio? Creativity, in that's just a sample, but uh, theater studio here is perceived not creating the, uh, the, uh, uh, the stories, but um, you know, playing the stories. <clears throat> so, um, they brought us these opinions and now we compare the resource requirement to the resource allocations that this brain will have and how do you think will it match will it be good fit for this brain yeah it does look so right it does look so so whatever required number one number two number three we have the same priorities here it simply matches. It uses maximum of our brain. And that's the approach that Gardner uses and we use a, in a subjective part of the report. Why I tell this is a subjective part of the report? Because one parent looking at this diagram, at this uh, resource allocation, may say that I'm going to focus myself on a logic and mathematics because my kid needs support. Why should I spend myself on, on a verbal? He can achieve whatever he will achieve. I will put my attention here in logic and mathematics to support him. Is it a valid approach? It is. Another parent will say, I don't care about your three maximum resources. I have only one bat, one shot, and that will be verbal. Give me a you know, development path for the pure verbal exercises or pure verbal path of the development. I don't care about music, don't care about kinesthetic. One shot to be uh, using the, uh, the, the most resourceful area, that's it. Valid approach, yes, valid. So what we offer is another valid approach, probably a balanced one, but still it's one of the possible approaches. That is why in the beginning I told you we have an objective measurement, which is first page of the report, which is which has numbers without any, you know, advisory. And then the advisory part of the report is still a subjective. So it offers one of the possible ways to, uh, to use the numbers. 
Understood? Okay. And if we take the same kid, the same kid, and uh, intend to ask to answer the question, if uh, if becoming a software developer is something um, in harmony with his brain resource, then probably the answer is also obvious, right? So software development requires a lot of logical and mathematics and then creativity and still verbal because you need to you know, navigate easily in different languages and convert human language to a computer language, which is also kind of verbal exercise. And those are the requirement priorities. And here, it doesn't really match. Number four and number five are required to be number two and number one. It doesn't mean that uh, he will be unsuccessful in becoming a software developer. It just says that it will not be using maximum out of his, uh, there is something better he can do. There is something easier for him to achieve. And that is why in the report, this type of activity for this brain will, tur will turn to be green. And, another, and this type of the activity will turn to be red. Yes and no, a little bit ridiculous and you will not see it on the report. But the whole idea is that green is more suitable compared to the red. Green is easier to achieve compared to the red. Green will bring you more harmony and more happy and more joyful compared to the red. Green means that you achieve faster compared to the red. But it doesn't say that Green is the only area to achieve and red is the area not to achieve. It's not about that. It's a comparative subject. It's a co comparative matter. Understood? So important and probably the most important is that this is just one of the possible way to, to apply the numbers. And you offer that as a, as a part of the service, but get yourself ready to accept any other ideas that parent may have to use the numbers. But what you have to protect and to be very insistful is in explaining the numbers themselves. Why this is important to understand the priority, what does low and high mean and so on and so forth. But if he wants to focus himself on the lowest, let him go. If he wants to focus on the one highest, let him go. That's that's a valid approach. Don't, don't fight, don't argue. Even if he will say that, one, sometimes you may have this discussion that I disagree with you that uh, becoming a software developer requires a logic. No, it, it's purely creativity. All the rest has no meaning. Accept it. Accept it. It's up to him to have his own vision and ideas and probably even better. Yes, we have you know, on a backstage, we have a specialist, we have professionals who gave us these opinions, which led us to this distribution, but let parent have his own opinion and valid opinion. Okay. Let's make, since we worked for almost two hours, let's make another five minutes break. Or oh, I think that uh, it's a lunchtime for, for you, Maram. Awesome. Yeah, when I uh, when I disappeared uh, from the screen, I was having my lunch so that you don't see me eating, but uh, okay. It's, it's okay, yeah. Let's have like uh, 15 minutes break just to eat something. Yeah, fine. So we okay. re reconvene in 15 exactly, yeah? Yep, yep. Okay. All right. You can stop. Okay. Here we go. What is the typical lunch uh, on uh, Cyprus? Well, in Cypriots, they eat always uh, sukkis oh. and um, um, potatoes. But, uh, yeah, for us, uh, we, we cook the uh, Lebanese uh, food. Ah. Yeah. Very international. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's uh, 
let's see what we have next. Let's give our Malaysia lady a minute because we need we need her for this part. We can. Hello, Sergey. Sergey is Fuad here. Sue and Asako is not back yet. They'll be back in a minute, I suppose. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fuad, can nice you see? to hear you. Yeah, <laughs> I've just been uh, quite busy lately. How are you? All good, all good. Thank you. Okay, good, good. I mean, just at yeah. the door there. Yeah, I mean, all right. We've been uh, we've been experiencing uh, school uh, online using Zoom, and uh, when you hear some unexpected voice, it's always a, a sign of uh, someone hacked the uh, the class, and you expect <laughs> not to appear on the screen. And all of a sudden, I hear the stranger voice and <laughs> prepared myself to switch off everything. <laughs> You know, that's uh, happened in my work as well. I mean, oil and gas, as you know, so um, calling people almost uh, 24 hours, right, across the world and sometimes yeah. uh, people in the other part of the world. Uh, is their lunchtime and they're looking at the stock market screen and then they inadvertently yeah. share the, the screen with us and all of us know uh, where he's making his winning and his yeah. losses. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go for mute now. I'll make sure they come back up very soon. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, just to say hello to the other two people in the meeting there. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm Fuad. We like a. Uh, I'm with Sue. Sue is my wife, and uh, we've been KL, but we are actually Singaporeans. Uh, not about to go back to Singapore. We like Malaysia, KL a lot. We are uh, we are also new. Um, we manage uh, the franchise in Cyprus and Greece. Ah, okay, great, great, nice. Uh, place. Same here. Thank you. So who has the equipment? Uh, Maram, is that you to have equipment with you, right? Okay. Yeah, they are with me. Yeah. We're not gonna uh, do, uh, do it. Maram, you have to tell Sergi what was your first impression when you saw the bag. A, she said it's a, it's a bulletproof bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. And you have the big case or the small case? The big one. The big one. Mm. Uh, th that big or that big? No, no, that big. It is. Uh, it is the big one. <laughs> uh, I think she means the small one because I saw the one uh, with uh, Peter. Uh -huh. I think the one you sent is is a bit small. Oh yeah, that's the small one. That's the small. Oh, one. that's the small one. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. It is, but uh, because we send this uh, to abroad and uh, some of our partners, they travel with the case, so we decided to make it. Uh, no, it's definitely durable, uh, Sergi. This is yeah. a good, it's a, it's a good idea. It doesn't look very romantic or sexy, <laughs> yeah. but that, that's okay. No, no problem. But that's uh, equipment, maybe, yeah. maybe when the time comes, um, I think Maram, and she showed me those uh, uh, papers, documents, the drawings the and material. The material. I think she believes they're not complete, but maybe when the time comes, we have to revalidate this. Is this for the old modules? For no, the old no, no, no. So uh, there is a one, one bad news for you mm -hmm. and uh, for the Malaysia also. We, uh, after we send you the equipment, we yeah. changed the uh, the testing modules. It's not a dramatic change, but that will require you to download it from the uh, shared drive and reprint it. 
because okay. we change the modules uh, yeah. it, from five age groups into three age groups. There is not a you know huge change. It's just a re recompilation of the albums, but still it needs to be reprinted. So basically, this set of papers need to be wasted. Oh, all right. Okay. No problem. Yeah. I'll check them out. And, you um, are one of uh, three of our partners newly joined, which faced this. Yeah. So we send the equipment and then our team has output the new modules and you face okay. this, uh, this situation. No I mean, it, 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 it's a peanut of cost, of course, uh, to reprint like uh, 25 pages, but still, yeah, that's inconvenience. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We still have uh, also some other stuff to do. I think eventually we will have to translate the documents, the reports to Greek. I also learned that there is a way we can do this with you. Um, we still have a, a long way as well. We still have the website. We still have a lot to yeah, do. Yeah, the page, the Facebook page. Um, that's yeah. not that's not a long journey. Uh, take Bosnia as an example. They spent uh, less than a week to localize it, a report to Bosnian and to get the website done. Since you're connected with uh, Habib, they have the template or you can get the template from Malaysia. They have a very nice website. Uh, you can launch it in, uh, in a day. <clears throat> no, we will definitely do that. We just decided uh, first, let's take the training to have a better view of what needs to be built. Absolutely, good. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good that you're telling us because the last thing and I wanted to comment on this honestly, that uh, uh, we knew that there were like five tests. Now you've uh, made them three, you've compiled them into three. Three uh, groups. Three groups instead of five age groups, now the three groups, but that's, that's fine. Uh, we just really uh, want to see how, how this thing rolls. And um, we have big plans, uh, Sergi. This is what you also need to know all the time. We really have big, big plans for this. You just said a few marvelous uh, things today. So from your partners, from your franchisees, you see some are doing uh, refranchising and some are doing a day in, day out job. I think Maram and I, we have those two elements. So she will be doing some, I'll be doing some. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's good uh, to, to start with. But yeah, really, um, we want to, as, as I told you, we're both excited. We want to see uh, the most comprehensive report on our kids and their cousins. So there are four reports that we really have to do in full to, to, to see. But yeah. Uh, you still have this. Are you connected with our support already? I am. Uh, in fact, I, she asked, I don't know who did, but someone asked uh, about the picture. So I'm looking for a picture to send across. Uh, but there must be a solution about the chit chat room that is all in Russian. There must be a solution. You tell me what, what we need to do other than Google do translation. translation. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, there are hashtags. So anything which relates to international markets, we put the hashtag international. So you mm -hmm. can subscribe yourself to international and you get rid of any Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, Russian quite a lot because uh, we also use this to send the leads to our partners. But if, if you say that that's boring, I was never considering that probably we can separate this in a to make chit chat a little bit more international, not overloaded with 3% of the... Uh, the case I is we don't understand. Uh, they have lots of um, conversations that um, we don't know what is it about, to be honest. I tried mm -hmm. to take them to Google Translate. Some of them... I no, 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 no need. I mean, if, if, it, if it's Russian, that means that this is about something which relates to to some customer in, um, in, Russia. in Russia. Russia, yeah. 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 So let us consider uh, how to separate this lead discussion from the general chit chat, probably it's worth uh, spending some efforts if it makes so complicated to use uh, chit chat for other than Russians. Okay, we'll, um, we'll find a way. Yeah. Um, I think let's start, let's start because 
do, do we start or wait for uh, one more minute whereby I can ask you a question, which is definitely... Yeah, yeah, good. okay, go ahead. Um, Sergi, remember uh, the gentleman Michalis, who, who was uh, a lead for Greek, uh, Greek. Anyway, he asked a question, which, you know, he's being very careful. He's being, he's not the guy who's going to jump on it. He wants to take his own uh, questions and answers. So he said, if this has been going on since 2014 or even 2016, so we're talking about six years around, give take, five to six years, has there been any longitudinal uh, type of um, uh, experiment done on any of the kids that you've tested and you've given yeah. sort of a recommendation? So uh, we, we do have our own longitudes, but uh, five years is not uh, a real longitude. The lo real longitude starts at age like five and should end at age of 20 to make it a real longitude study. So for these long studies, we have two parts. One part is our own observations of the controlled group and controlled people. We don't push our general customers to appear with the follow-ups, but we made an agreement with some of them to track their performance on a, on, a, on a yearly, sometimes even more often. And within the Russia, we have uh, an extra service, which is called Archimedes. Hmm. I don't know if, if you heard about that, but it's, it's, okay. uh, it's, uh, it's a plan for the development, which is based on this, resource allocation which is for a couple of periods and for a multiple level and there is a huge database of like what you have to read the movies to watch right. and those families we follow up for a couple of years so we can track the progress it's uh, uh, it will be just for better understanding since we jump in this it's hard to link the measurement result with the achievement because of the reason that the achievement greatly depends on the resource. So to make a real scientific research, you have to make sure that every kid in the focus group has the same resource, meaning the same teachers, the same materials, the same parental uh, and family uh, you know, approach to that. And then if the starting position is the same or different, then you may expect the fair estimation. That's um, for this type of the uh, estimations is very hard to achieve even in our circumstances, in verbatory circumstances is very difficult because we lack of any control on the family. We just rely on their feedback. So we ask the question, what is the resource? And they, you know, with for the purpose or without purpose they may provide wrongful information so we have no any control on that so we do yeah. another type of longitudes so we made an agreement with a certain special schools uh, uh, which are focused on uh, developing uh, gifted uh, kids and they have the okay. pre-screening of the gifted kids now and and uh, as ever uh, education is very high priority for the for the government and they have okay. created the clusters, the big clusters um, called Sirius. And for okay. the Sirius, they collect the people, uh, uh, talented uh, people from all, uh, from all the regions and they bring them together. And entering to measure those classes, we may make sure that if this is a musical class, then most likely they are musically talented, they are provided with the resources, they are provided with the family attention, uh, to, the, to the music and so on and so forth. And we, we should expect that if our uh, algorithm is precise, then the uh, average musical uh, score in that yeah. group should be greatly higher than any other group outside of that school. And that's okay. how we benchmark. That's how we control the preciseness of the algorithm. We, we, other th because if it is not, then means that we are measuring something but not, but not music <clears throat> and then the third then the third thing and this is more fundamental and more important everything that we measure is based on the uh, uh, neural correlates and a lot of them are built upon the longitude studies which had 
which have had more control. Because if you take our example, we have walk-in customers from advertisement. If you take yeah. the research papers, they do the focus group. Sometimes they pay for the focus groups, right? And they can control the environment for that focus groups. So the main credibility comes not from our research. That's what we do just for the, uh, you know, for kind of science. That's not a scientific approach. That's just yeah. a way for our own proof of concept or even, even sometimes for promotion. But more fundamental is that among those studies that we use as a source of our neural correlates, there are a lot of longitude studies and some of them, by the way, listed on the website and included in the report as a, as a reading list. And there are longitude studies for 13 years, if I remember the longest one, one three. So yes, okay. longitude is an important control method. So this is not <clears throat> the main source of information, but that's the control uh, tool to control the accuracy of the database. And yes, there are longitudes. Okay, so maybe I can I can uh, come back to him and tell him there are. And if you can uh, share these with me, if you can, that would be helpful. Yep, sure, sure. Perfect. Excellent. I think uh, we can start. Let's start. Yeah, let's start. Okay. I'll, I'll grab my coffee, which is good. А я просто не понял. Я думал, что это всего один модуль. А, 4.18 лет. Просто непонятно написано. 4.18 лет. Я подумал, что это всего один модуль. У нас же 4.10, 11.18 и 18+. Но если все в порядке, то все в порядке. Я просто только из-за этого. Sorry. Okay. Oops. Just one small second. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, uh, smoothly move to uh, to a practice of operations. And practice is very important uh, for what we do because neurometria is a metria, so you, we need to learn to do things precisely. You already noticed that pressing the buttons is one of the key important things. Asking the questions in the correct way is also one of the key things. Putting the device on the head, <clears throat> one of the key things. They are all very simple, nothing difficult, but uh, you know, obeying to follow the simple rules will uh, distract the result and uh, impact the result greatly. So nothing complicated. I don't have any psychological background and being able to do that. <clears throat> Many of our partners, they don't have any kids experience in except probably with their own kids. So everyone is able to follow this, but unfollowing that is crucial. And let's start discussing the room for the test. Basically, you can do the test anywhere. And that is one of the purpose why we made this uh, equipment uh, such a light seven kilo weight. Uh, many of our partners and almost all of our partners, they are women who are doing the tests. And uh, uh, our first version of the device was 12 kilo case, that one. So you are very lucky to have only seven kilo case. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so you can travel, you can do it anywhere, but still you have to consider the, uh, the room to, just a second, they need a, a code to access the system, which all of the sudden only I can provide.
Yep, done. <clears throat> so we need to make sure that uh, simple rules are met by 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 that uh, by that equip uh, by that um, uh, space. What are the rules? And apart from just learning the rules, and we, I want you to understand the principle. What is important for us in, in the process? We need to make sure that the signal that we record during the test is mainly generated by the part of the brain in charge of mathematics or in charge of verbal or in charge of creativity. Because anytime we sit doing something, for example, I'm speaking to you verbal, uh, creativity and, uh, and logic, right, as we discussed. But my brain also analyzes everything around me. The lights, the, you know, the texts on the walls, the colors, the sounds that will appear, the smells. Someone cooks, someone drinks, uh, drinks, uh, drinks coffee, uh, airplane, you know, truck. Uh, air corn suddenly switched on. So brain, you cannot let brain, oh, please don't think about anything. You cannot ask the brain. So brain, brain needs to analyze everything that is observed. Body position, right? So you're doing with him a verbal exercise, but if there will be a lot of noises around him, including smells and the colors and whatever, brain will still have to analyze it. So our purpose, and the fundamental principle of uh, choosing appropriate place to do the test is reducing the noise, avoiding the sources of the no uh, sources of the noise, and let's name them. <clears throat> First uh, type of this of the uh, <clears throat> of the noise is the stress. Stress itself does not create a noise and it's not even harming the result, but stress lets us uh, block thinking resources. So if we are in the stress, then being asked a question, we are not going to think about answer because I'm already afraid of un answering the question. I'm already uh, thinking how to escape the room what way to turn the discussion not to give an answer, right? So if we create an atmosphere which the kid will be scared of, if he will consider that as an examination or something other, rather than just, you know, having fun, he will block himself from thinking and uh, use any other resource, not mathematical, not verbal, not creativity, not those that you intend to use. So reducing, you cannot avoid stress. So, you know, meeting with a stranger and wearing this strange device on head is always a stress, but you need to make sure that the atmosphere that you have inside the room, the way you communicate out of the gate with, <clears throat> with the kid reduces his stress to the level of not blocking his uh, thinking ability. We always feel stress doing something for the first time, but let this stress be reasonable. So make as much connection with him, friendly environment, no borders, no eyes between you and the kid. You are friends shaking hands when he, he enters the room, asking something about lady girl's dress, anything to warm up the atmosphere, okay? To avoid this resource blocking. Then classical type of, this, of, the, of the noise is a, a smell, of course, because we all, you know, people and we have lunch, but if you have nice pizza for the lunch or kebab or whatever hum with hummus, and then uh, someone arrives to do the test and he is hungry, you know, he, he got, these interruptions, he, start, he's, he starts thinking about all of these smells and analyzing that, what was the product, is it, so on and so forth, right? So avo avoid uh, taking food into the, in, in the room where you do the uh, tests or do a very good uh, air exchange, open the window, change the, the uh, to avoid the, the smells. <clears throat> no sudden noises. What does it mean, sudden noises? That means if you have air conditioner uh, working all the time, even noisy, that's okay. Because we will record it all the time. It's not an interruption. 
So it's in the baseline of the signal. It's on the loaded level of the brain signal. So we can, you know, we can mitigate it. But if, if the noise appears in the middle, so it changes our state of the brain, right? In the middle, all of the sudden track will go. That's a problem. If tracks will go all the time for 30 minutes, that's okay, right? So we need to avoid these sudden noises. If you see the sudden noise, what you have to do is stop recording. You stop recording, wait until the sound disappears, and then you continue, right? So just make sure that within the meaningful parts of the signal, there are no strong uh, um, artifacts. Then uh, uh, our visual, uh, our hearing system is clear. Visual system, we also need to make sure no, no artifacts there. If you put, if you consider the seating arrangement, don't put the kid in front of the window or in front of the wide space because that's the source of information need to analyze all the time. What's outside, what's in the room, doors are opening, controlling all of this. Put him in front of the wall. So move like, like here, so the desk next to the wall. So let him sit seeing only the wall and then the task, wall and the task, right? That's the perfect sitting. On the wall that he's gonna see, during the task, during the task. Don't put any, uh, any pictures like this, any signs, avoid using many colors because this is all the source of information. You may have some painting, but a big painting. For example, I had in my office uh, in front of, of the tested person, a tree, but that on a wall, that was, but that was a very, very big tree. So part of it, which he sees sitting and doing test, has no meaning. It's just, you know, part of the tree, which is the bigger, so it's not a tree. There is nothing to analyze. <clears throat> but other than that, it's better to have any plain color. <coughs> the last uh, big source of uh, uh, signal disruption is movement. Once you have uh, movement, that is electricity. The same way as our uh, neurons inside the brain exchange the electricity one to another to make the muscle movements, our body also uses electricity and quite a huge electricity. So your leg movement, to, if you just uh, you know, uh, flip flap uh, your legs, will send as much electricity to the body that the, uh, that uh, the receiver will detect its, um, uh, this signal. And um, device has no any way to distinguish muscle electricity from the brain electricity. So once your kid is moving, once he stands up suddenly, once he rotates himself on a wheel, once he makes a lot of these big movements, right, like this, that will all be sending an electricity. Hi there, welcome back. It will all Hi, be sent. Yeah, that's okay. That will be a lot of electricity sent and received uh, by, by the device. So we have to make sure that the um, cheer has no wheels for kids. It has no rotation, just a normal fixed sitting. <clears throat> Uh, legs need to be on a, a floor. If you have your marketing and sales strategy to target different age groups in the, inside the same room, then um, you either consider the cheer to have adjusted height or a couple of cheers, different, different height, or you can consider having a stand next to the chair. So if early kid will arrive, like four or five year old, so he can put his legs on a stand. And you doing the test, you also control with your, with your eyes how he sits to, 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 to make sure he sits without these big movements. Sometimes you face the, uh, the situation when you have to let children to move. 
if they have a deficit of attention, if they are tired, they want to go to toilet, and you may allow that. Just making sure that this period of time you're not recording, so button is not pressed. Device is on head, everything is connected. Let him go, let him stand up, you know, a little bit, warm up himself, sometime they need it. One out of 100 uh, persons will need that. So let him, but not within the period of time when he is doing exercise with his brain, right? Not verbal, not mathematical. In between, let, let him enjoy a little, little play, drinking water, discussion. Are you comfortable to sit? Maybe move a little, move the chair, move the desk, <clears throat> anything in between the exercises, not within the exercise. So basically, you will not need a, a huge room, like uh, 12 square, square meters, 15 square meters is reasonable. Avoid renting uh, a high, uh, very big spaces because it's difficult to arrange their comfortable, non-noisy atmosphere, ambience. Or if you have already this big space, then consider how to split it into the zones with some furniture, for example, with with some uh, stellage or scarf, kind of that. Extra to that. Imagine this is uh, this is for all the different tests, right? Mathematics, uh, math, uh, creativity, uh, music, everything, right? Yeah, 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 for all the tests. You need only this. You don't need a football field to, to do the kind of aesthetic No, I, me I meant to say uh, when it comes to the movement, so uh, movement across all tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we, do, we do movements. We cannot do this, but big movements for the reason you already know. So we, we activate the brain resource with these gesture movements. You, you're going to see it with the writings and the gesture movements. Okay. Um, other than that, good idea is to have water available, which is kind of standard almost everywhere because parent will, will wait for 30 minutes, um, let him have something to drink and let him have something to read, maybe some magazine, maybe newspaper. We may let the parent to be inside the room where we test the kid, but making sure that he sits far enough back to kid, not to let him interact and not to let kid see the parent and asking him to sit, uh, so to sit silently, obviously. Good distances, one, 1. 1.5 to 2 meters. So he sees the process, but he cannot see the exact detail, not to give an answer, correct answer, because they always intend to give correct answers instead of the kids. So let him be you know, overseeing the process, but not joining the process, <clears throat> joining the assessment. Another good idea is to have access to the color printer. Yes, you may read report using laptop or even watching on a, on a smartphone and discuss it with a parent, but it's simply more convenient and more effective to have a paper copy where you can you know, circle something, write down some remarks, question marks, proclaim marks, underline something which is important. So that's quite a useful uh, tool to have a discussion and counseling session with the, with a parent. And if you print it, then it should be colorful because if it's not color colorful, then you cannot read it since color does have meaning on the report. Okay, that's that's about the room. As you as said, it's very simple, but uh, obeying to follow it will you know harm the. Uh, uh, the uh, test preciseness. Let's do unboxing of the tools. We have ladies very lucky to have tools and uh, me and you will be without tools, but I know it by heart. Don't need to have the case in front of me. So ladies, please take the cases. Let them be next to you. And uh, I'm going to introduce you one by one the things. OK. So first thing uh, to, to notice is that 
in case you have everything to do the test, except for the blank A sheet, uh, blank uh, A4 papers. So for some exercises, you need uh, you need to have blank papers for the sketching and uh, and drawings. Uh, other than that, everything is there. So you open the box and your workspace is ready. You close the box and you are ready to move to another uh, to another uh, to another <coughs> location. Uh, during the course of this pandemic, by the way, a significant portion of our uh, partners, they uh, of course canceled the uh, leasing agreements uh, for, for the permanent addresses and some of them decided to go mobile even after, uh, after you know everything uh, went okay. So they decided that it's more efficient to rent it per day or per couple of days um, uh, for, 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 the, for the test or even do it on the go to, to the customer locations or ma making arrangements in uh, early kids development centers, stuff like that. It's not for everyone suits, but you may adopt that. You may consider as a part of your business, this business on the go making the agreement. It's not necessarily required uh, for people to travel to you. If you have a, a kids center which can supply you like five, six, ten heads, then it's worth going to their place. Why not? Or even uh, a family with. Yeah, Sergi, is there any specific position where the uh, tester should be sitting? Is it next to the person getting tested or is it not not sitting opposite right yeah not sitting opposite uh this this will uh, this will uh, uh create a stressful atmosphere because sitting opposite is a director to to the employee is a teacher to the pupil it's um it's like a leader to to the to the follower so sitting next to each other or uh, on a corner to each other. So corner is uh, is a uh, is a more uh, recommended sitting because you can uh, control the tablet better. So you can uh, turn the tablet in the way that subject will not see the the screen of the tablet. So sitting uh, shoulder, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shoulder to shoulder is also okay if you can manage the screen to be invisible to the subject. Okay. So uh, let's uh, take the first thing out of the um, out of the case, which is the tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, along with the tablet, you have a plastic stand. Uh, let me show you. Where do I have it? This one. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly, exactly. I have it a different color. So this is used to put the tablet in, on it. And you have to use it because if you put it just uh, uh, flat on the, on, the, on the table, it will be visible to the subject and kids will also pay the, a lot of attention to what is going on, the waves there. So everything is so interesting. So now we are, I will ask you to switch on the device. and uh, launch Verbatoria app. So now you should see the login screen and probably it will be in Russian, not yet uh, configured to your license. Let's switch on uh, the voices. I think uh, we are not too many. Let's, let's have your voices. Okay. <coughs> and then you log in. So you already have the login screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So now you need to tick the uh, under the password field, there will be a selection of the country of the flags. Yeah. 
Okay, select Cyprus and yeah. you select Malaysia. Did you find Malaysia and Cyprus? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now yeah. Uh, use lo as login, you should use your mobile phone. And as password, you use your five last digits of the telephone number. Oh, okay. I used another one. Is it okay? Is there any problem? Uh, you have to input that one that was provided. I don't know what was what provided. Let me see. Because I already did it yesterday and I just put um, from one to five. Ah, you already changed the password? Yes. Oh, that's okay. If you change, then, then you just oh, okay. log in with the password right. that you currently have. Yeah. So now do log in to the application. Mm -hmm. On the main screen, you see the general information about the license. Uh, on the top of the screen, you see your details, your name, the uh, the color next to your name. It should be green now. Yeah. A little circle. It has the email and telephone. The telephone, which one you use to enter the application, and email, the one uh, that is used for uh, to receive to send you notifications. Sure. One thing to mention here is that uh, you are not going to receive copies of the customer reports on that email. Copies of customer reports will be sent to location email, not to your personal email, not to your license okay. email. All right. So if you need to have a copy of the email for doing a consultation with a parent, you have to consider how to probably forward this uh, copies from location box to your mailbox or for you to have an access to this location email box. Okay. Understood? Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, in the middle of this screen, you will have the uh, details of your location, mm -hmm. which has the name, the country, the address, and the telephone number. That's the information that customers will receive um, with an appointment notification. So once you make an appointment, customer will get a short message and email with confirmation of this appointment. And uh, there will be address for him to, uh, to drive to, and there will be a clickable telephone number. So once he forgets the appointment details, he clicks the phone and directly connects with you. So make sure that uh, those details are correct. Yeah. The, uh, on the bottom of the screen, you will see the name of your partnership line. I think for you, it should be international. Correct. And for KL, you should see Malaysia. Operak. Or Penang. Penang, yeah. Okay, so that's it. That's just an information screen. The important thing for you to remember uh, to to uh, to control is vali validity of the telephone numbers and emails and address, so not to get customer confused, and also this uh, uh, colored circle next to your uh, name. If it's green, that's okay. If it's yellow, we need your attention to something. That's, uh, it doesn't have any particular meaning. That only means that there is something which need your attention. Probably mm -hmm. you've been already contacted on some, uh, the typical, typical case is that we observe uh, on internet, for example, on Instagram, uh, you're doing a post and we see that you do the test with some small violations of the procedure and we want to discuss with you to change the seating arrangement or something something like that and we raise this yellow warning notice meaning that uh, with uh, one or another way we need to talk to each other that has no any limitation on your uh, license but needs mm -hmm. your attention to specific things <clears throat> or we may have this if uh, there is uh, an agreement for extended payment term, then for this extended payment term, there will be raised this um, yellow warning flag. 
Okay. Again, that's not, there's no limitation on the function. And red is the, uh, is the state when we use the, uh, which is used for the blocked license. So when you decided to exit, for example, then uh, the way for us to control is to block the license because we cannot remove the license as long as uh, customer reports are associated with the license, right? So customers okay. may be still willing to get uh, a consultation for that report um, even year after. So we need to keep them on our database. So we not removing the licenses of our exited neurometries, but we deactivating the license. So you still be able to log in to your license, but not be able to, to do anything. Something like that. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to next screen, which is, which is called schedule. On the bottom, you see main and then schedule. Um, appointments. Appointments. Yeah. <laughs> and now uh, you can see your appointments for the selected date. It should be today. Mm. Yeah, and appointments are empty for you. Yeah. There are no any appointments because you haven't done any. If anyone will make an appointment uh, logging to, for example, uh, the website verbatoria.ru, we're going to practice it. Um, uh, selecting a time and making an appointment, you will see it on your tablet. And let me make an appointment for both of you. Oh, Sergio, uh, would it be possible if you can share your software, I mean, application screen, so that I just have an idea. I know I'm not going to be doing anything, mm -hmm. but if that's possible, that would be great. I don't have any in front of me, so let's, let us ah. ask uh, Maram to share. Exactly. Let me, let me get on Zoom and I'll share my screen. Yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, I will share with you the... Okay. The appointment. So can you now see the, uh, the website? Yes. What is your city? Nicosia, right? Yeah, here you go. If you go to online appointment of Nicosia now, it's empty, even know your location here, right? Okay. It should be here, but it, it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, just a quick comment. Uh, Nicosia is N-I-C-O, not N-Y, because they take it with, with pride. And the other thing is the phone number is not the right phone number. I think we need to change it also. So, uh, um, Pride is a good thing, but um, um, the name uh, we took from the from the uh, uh, G, uh, Geo IP system, and we need wow. to use the formal name. So when a customer from Nicosia is visiting the website, then the system yeah. can forward him to the exactly to the page which is for that city and in the mappings in the uh, geo ip systems we have nicosia being written like this i see so let's try let let us change let's, it to okay. to be to be uh, another writing and uh, when you log in uh, from nicosia let us see if you will be directed automatically to the landing page of nicosia i will do it uh, in the evening so tomorrow we're gonna we, we may practice Perfect. it Perfect. Perfect. Let me put the note. As well as the phone number, please. Yeah. Phone number. Uh, I think that's the uh, phone number that we took from the first license, which should be yours, right? Yes. So we need to have Maram's number, not not mine. Yeah. So yeah, that could be through Telegram channel communicated. Nico Sia. Nico Sia. Yeah. Okay. So why there is no location? Why mm. there is no your office? Because you don't have any schedule open. Mm. Meaning that you have the cabinet, you have the location, but you didn't uh, open any hours to work. If there is no hour for customer to make an appointment, 
he cannot make an appointment and that's why he, ca he cannot see you on the appointment. So to open this, can you go to a uh, settings menu on the tablet? Yeah. And can you share the screen by the way? Uh, yes, I cannot share it because you are already sharing your screen. So I cannot oh, do that. It should be a load. Let me see. Let me see. Should be a load. Oh. You have to stop sharing, I think. Uh, yeah, I will, but it's configured to be able. Okay. Okay, can you share now? All right, yeah. we'll go to. Okay, setting. Not yet seeing you. Uh, you don't see it? Uh, I can actually see your screen, Mano. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Oh, okay. You can see it now? Nope. Um, um, Sergi, maybe you need to toggle between the screens. Oh, yeah, I see, I see. Yep. Okay. Okay. So yep, now yep. I go to um, settings. So yeah, go to settings. Go to work schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now is everything empty here, as you may see. Okay. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So to open this, uh, the uh, particular time slot, you just click on it. So let's open some hours for Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, any, any of them. Okay. Tuesday, make it a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, like this. And uh, like this, okay. Okay. And now press save button, which is right top. Okay. Uh, you may uh, save this schedule only for this week, or if it's a general schedule, then you may save it up to five weeks. Normally, we decide that we work the same schedule for a couple of weeks. So let's save it this week only. Okay. Okay. Now let me show you. Can you now see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so let me update the... And now you can see you on the on a, on a, on a website, right? So you mm -hmm. appeared because you have some slots available for customers to make an appointment. And let's make an appointment. That's normally how you meet with your customers, discussing the potential customers you're discussing, introducing the verbatoria on the go. And uh, okay, let's do test. Uh, let's see. Oh, let, let's like this. Let's start from, from the beginning. Let's see which slots I have. And we open only a couple of it for today. Nice. Oh, it's already gone because it's in the past. You cannot make an appointment for the past. And for Tuesday, for tomorrow, I do have two slots open. Let's make an appointment for tomorrow. And uh, can you give me your telephone number, Shady? Uh, it's, it's the same one you see. <laughs> you can oh, take yeah, okay. number. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a mobile, right? Yes, yes. Uh, are you gonna dial it? No, I'm gonna just uh, send you. you know, okay, perfect. Yes, yes, correct, correct, correct. Uh huh. Say name is Shady, and you can do it like this. Shady, I met on exhibition. 
So you can okay. put any remarks for you. So Good. this okay. this name will all we know will only appear in your accounting system. It will not appear anywhere on a on a customer reports or anywhere else. Yeah. So this is something yeah. just for you to to have an idea what this appointment is about. You can put, do it like this with with Sun, oh. right? All okay. Right. So what's your email, Shady? Shady dot Saba S A B A at Gmail. Saba. Like this? Yes. Okay. And you decided to go with the two appointments because you have your son, right? Uh, okay. Make an appointment. So appo appointment done. Now you should have received the short message and email. Okay, one second. And you, Maram, also received an email as the neurometry is assigned to, to, make a, to make this test. Yes, I did. Okay, I received I... a message and I received, let me check my email. I received well, an email, right? Yeah, you should receive an email. <clears throat> Yep. Yes, that is correct. Good, very good. Let's try the same with KL. Oh, I don't see the Kuala Lumpur. Where is that? Uh, a quick, a quick question, please. Uh, yep. Um, when you say two people, two people means the parent and the kid, or two kids, or two tests in general. It's, uh, it's up to your agreement. It's just uh, two appointments. So you will uh, receive in the system two appointments. I see. I see. Okay. And let's, let's switch back to the, um, uh, <clears throat> to the tablet. Okay. okay. And sorry, but for the price, you just put a configured price like this, no? Uh, pricing, uh, if it's <coughs> there, then uh, you probably provided this pricing or this is just general. I think this is, we haven't yet uh, finalized this, but yes, we can always talk about it uh, later. Yeah. So this is up to you to decide, of course. Okay. Go to appointments. Right. This is for yesterday, as you may see. Yeah. So, plus. so sc rotate, scroll for tomorrow because we made an appointment for tomorrow. And you see two appointments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. So tap each of uh, any of them, the first mm -hmm. one. Okay. It now downloads and you see the name of the parent appears like this. Shady, I made an exhibition with son. And you still need to fill other details. Okay. Child details and uh, confirm the timing and that's it. So this is how it's gonna be synced. If you do any appointments inside the application, then it will also use the time slots on the website from the backend. So if you do an appointment in application, you may no longer be able to use this time slot uh, using the website. And let's do it. How about Malaysia? Are you with the tablet to share with us how you do an appointment? Uh, stop sharing. I try to save. I try to save my side uh, available slot. So I think it's already on the system. Uh huh. So now, can you uh, do you have a Zoom installed on your on your tablet so we can uh, uh, okay. do an appointment? Okay, okay, so launch Zoom on the tablet and uh, let's make other side of the appointment, making appointment using the tablet. Okay. It will take a bit some time because we are using different um, like laptop on Zoom just now and we are joining. Let's, the... let, let's do it next time. So, uh, so Maram, okay. uh, can, you, can you launch again your application and Zoom and we do appointment with you? Yeah.
you sharing already? Oh, no. I am. Okay. okay. Good. So, yep. Okay. Login. From the um, website or uh, the application? No, we do from, from application. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to settings first, because you don't have any available slots. You had two and you used two already. Okay, your right. work schedule. Okay, okay. We, can, uh, we can put for um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, for Wednesday, why not? Mm -hmm. I know on Cyprus, everyone is lazy, not more than two slots each day. <laughs> Even one is too much. Okay. Okay. By the way, this is a, this is as per the local time, correct? Yep, this is the local time. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, so save I... it. Press yeah. button. Press save button. Yeah. For this, For this week. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and now go back to, uh, oh, you close the application. No, it's okay, it's here. With no. this, I, I, I can definitely say that you are on iPhone, not on Android. Yes. <laughs> mm. Okay. Go to appointments. Okay. Uh, press plus. You don't need to scroll because you will select the date uh, the the date manually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the big no. plus, big plus. Okay. Okay. And now let's fill from the scratch. So parent is your customer. Even if you test adult, mm -hmm. you just type the same name as adult as a, a, and and the kid. Okay. Yeah, again, parent, you pay, You may put any name. Money. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mobile phone is the telephone number, a customer on which customer will receive an appointment notification. Okay. May, uh, please note that the uh, short message and email to the customer will only be sent if you make a, an appointment for next day, at mm -hmm. least for the next day. Because mm -hmm. if it is for today, then the system assumes that customer is already with you. Okay. So there is no need to send him reminder and notifications. Sure. If it is for the next periods, then a customer will receive emails three times on appointment. So once you put it on the system, customer will get it 24 hours before and one hour before. So no. to make sure that he is not forgotten, right? Okay. Quite convenient. So don't bother yourself to, uh, you know, to reminder. put side notes, just put them on the system and they will get the reminders. That's it. Sure. So let's do it. Put the number, put the email. Um, any number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you can, you can check. Put my number, Maram, 9651410. 965. One four one zero zero. Okay, email. Sergi, without doing this appointment, you cannot do the test or they're not related? Uh, sure, sure. So appointment uh, needed to start the test. Uh -huh. Because you need to put uh, uh, customer detail to send the, the testing result. If you don't have uh -huh. the email and telephone where to send the the, de uh, the report, then you need to know the age. You need to know the gender. To... Okay, this is this is great. This is actually very very good. But what about ad hoc? You know, it could happen sometimes. Uh, so they they walk in into your office and you just make an appointment as we do now. Uh huh. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Uh, to be honest, um, more than half of our appointments, they are ad hoc. I mean, they probably made an agreement before to do the test, but they put it just a minute before the test happens. Okay. And for any reason you made an appointment and uh, the person did not show up 
forever. What happens? The, it just lives in the in the system. You receive the the details of this appointment on your reports, and you can track them. Does nothing happens? I mean, it's it's free of charge. You are not charged for that. Are you not charged for a report? Yeah. Okay. So this is I put save. Yeah. Now you need to put the child details. Uh -huh. oh, nice. Asam, are you following? I, I, I don't see if uh, if you will on a tablet. Yeah, I tried. I I tried to yeah, I tried to make an appointment as parent and I really need a sick uh, text. Oh you already oh, did. Um, yeah. Okay, 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 good. So you have a, su uh, a good, support. A good question here as well. So if, if you have someone who's five and 11 months, he's still considered five. He's still considered five. Okay. And then I could say. Yeah, now date and time for appointment. So remember mm -hmm. you have the schedule for Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, now the system will show you the available slots that you turned available for you. You pick up one and make an appointment, click new. Yes. Okay. Now Shady, you may check that Wednesday uh, left only two appointments on the website, or you may just rely on my word. Uh, I definitely would rely on your word. I'm just looking at the, uh -huh, the message and then the email. Okay, perfect. Yeah, everything is, is there. So now let's make sure that we have devices configured to be used with your uh, devices, meaning the, uh, the, uh, the sensor. Can you take the sensor? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maram, you can also stop sharing. That's okay. Uh, no, uh, I think huh? we need Maram screen now. Okay. 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 So now switch on the device. Asam, switch on the device. The sensor. The sensor, the sensor. Is it on, Mar Asam? Uh, one second, I just, I'm going to put it here, yeah. Just yeah. press an, a little hold, just one second. Okay. Now it's on, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And to switch it off, you press it once without holding. Press and that's it. Okay. Yep. Now again, switch it on. Good. Yeah. Um, Maram, go to appointments and uh, Asam also go to appointments and uh, jump into the appointment that you just made. No, uh, Maram back. Yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday, okay, jump okay. into this alias appointment. Yeah. Asam, you also open the appointment that you just made mm -hmm. and uh, press start testing. Okay, now what you have to do is put the device on you. So you see, uh, okay. how you put it? To the side, no? Side. This one, the device should be somewhere above your left ear. Okay. Left ear. And yes. the distance here is one finger above the eyebrow. One finger. You know, let me and I'll put this here. Okay. Oh, there is another Maram entering. Yes, because I wanna I wanna see how things are done from your side. Uh -huh. and I will Oh yeah, correct. Uh, uh, move it a little bit higher. One what? finger above the eyebrow. Yeah, like this. Yeah. 
turn off one of the devices. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And now let's fix with uh, Assam. The device is on above the right ear. Ear. Very good. Very good. Now you need to hear like beep, beep. Yes, I did already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That means that the, the, the device detected the brain signal. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Little bit lower, little bit. Awesome, little, little bit. A little higher. One finger, one like this, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So that's a perfect fit position. And now let's press uh, connect with sensor. So I see that uh, uh, your Bluetooth is off. And what's with you, Asam? Try again. Yeah, so you have already configured. Try again. So you will not be able now to uh, start, Maram, because you need to uh, pair your device with the, uh, with the sensor in the Bluetooth menu. So go to Bluetooth menu. You are already configured because uh, Fuad was using that. Yeah. Go to Bluetooth settings, long tap it. No, press and hold, yep. <laughs> now switch it on, turn on. Wait for the devices. Brain link, tap it. And this is the way how you can connect sensor with any other Bluetooth, uh, with any other Android device. So you may use the tablet that we provided you and you may use any other tablets. Okay. Okay, now go back to Does the- Does it have uh, to be Android, Sergi, or iPhone would work or uh, No, uh, we need, the problem with, with iPhone is that they do not provide the raw signal, the, 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 the source uh, signal that we need to extract the neural correlates. So that, uh, in, there is no foreseeable way that iPhone gonna allow us to access this data so we can only work with, uh, with Android. Start okay. testing. Brain waves, like, yeah. Yeah. Connect with sensor. Okay, very good. Yeah. Press start recording. So now you see this line on the screen. Okay. That has no meaning. So the line has no meaning except for one. There is a signal out of your brain so you can share it now with Shady and Shady can have a proof of concept that <laughs> brain is there. Yeah, that's, that's the joke I always do with, with, with anyone I test. <laughs> uh, again, remember higher has no meaning, lower has no meaning. That's just an indication that the signal is there. And then everything which happens now is being recorded. So all of the signal is recorded, but so far no button is pressed. So no buttons are in red state. That means that whatever recorded now will not be analyzed. It's like a noise, it's useful, useless data. And now you have um, eight buttons on the top. Yeah. Seven of them, seven of them, you probably can guess um, are related with the uh, seven, seven intelligences, right? Mm -hmm. But we have an extra button and extra is nine, nine. And this is the button that we use to indicate the relaxed state of the mood. So we make the very first exercise, please sit straight, relax, don't close your eyes, don't do anything, and just, you know, keep silent. Are you ready? Go, and let's press nine, nine. Maram, press nine, nine. Okay, now you see button is red. 
Red means that signal is going to be analyzed. And this is the only button which will automatically switch off after 15 seconds. 15 seconds and it turned automatically to be blue. Blue color means that we already recorded enough of this type of the exercise. Okay. Right? Yeah. And let's work with other buttons. So one one is a verbal. Two one is a mathematical. Three one is a music. Four one is creativity. Five one is kinesthetic. Six, six one people awareness. Seven one self awareness. So we take the paper from the papers and then using the buttons to record the brain thinking. And let's uh, record uh, 15 seconds of each. Press one, one. Awesome, press one, one. Yeah, and now press it again. Okay, you see the state now is, is yellow. Can you guess what can you guess what does it mean? It means you're not yet finished, 15 seconds. Exactly. So that means that as of now, whatever you record is not going to be analyzed because we are not recording, right? Uh, <coughs> but this has indication that you already started verbal exercises, recorded but less than 15 seconds. So press it again. And the counter below, you see, for Maram is nine seconds, so it didn't start from zero. It started from the time when you okay. stopped it. Okay, now oh, stop it. Stop. Yeah, it turned to be blue. Asam, yeah. for you also blue? Yeah. Good. Let's do the same with two one. Good. And, and you mentioned if it's over 15 seconds and it's still within the question part. It's yeah, still let's, good let's, to do. let's practice it. Let's okay. wait for longer, longer, longer. So you see, you can work as many time as you need. And sometimes, for example, when you do this uh, 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 kinesthetic exercises, moving the cubes to build the pictures, it will take some time, a minute, right? And you all will, be, uh, all of this will be recorded. So it's you see, it's still recording. Maybe mm -hmm. very difficult mathematical task, right? You get the answer, you press stop. Okay. Excuse me, okay. can I ask one? Why, why this number 21, 21 didn't turn to orange? Uh, it will it turn, turn to... to uh, so Asam, uh, let's play with you. Press three, one. So I stop 21 yeah. and then start 31. Yeah, 31. But this 11 big turn orange. But uh, wait, uh, just press 31. Yeah. Okay. And now press it again. Press it again. The color is? Orange, yes. Yeah. So when you record less than 15 seconds, okay, okay, then it will be orange. So okay. for two one, we had different situations. So two one, yes. we recorded like almost a minute. Uh -huh. So that's already more than 15 seconds. So that is why you didn't see the yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Maram also record three one and you also finish recording three one. So three one is, is for the musical type of the exercises. We will do something with the drum. And you also see the player button on the bottom of the screen, like play, forward and rewind. Also used, you don't need to press it, but it's nothing. Yeah, I will explain it, how to use it. Okay, 4-1. Four 4-1 one. Four one is uh, creativity. The good thing for you is that uh, every page that you have in the exercises will have the code on the bottom of the of the page yeah which exactly tells you which button to be used on this uh, exercise on the type of the exercise it's very easy but still you no, will I be was just about to ask why why wouldn't uh, we write them by name but apparently there is a reason which is the coding uh, 
uh, first name has the uh, uh, attention. So if you put like creativity, then first thing uh, the, the the person will analyze the, the 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 meaning of the verbal. The second thing is sometimes when you discuss it with parents, you understand why it is creativity or why is, this is mathematical and logical. And for them, it may be confusing. And that's a ridiculous discussion. So we decided to stay with codes. No, I mean, it's, it's definitely useful to make it on codes on paper. I actually meant to say on the buttons on the screen so that it makes less confusion for the tester. But maybe after a couple of times, you will get used to it. Uh, if you decide to go with codes on the papers, then the codes should be on the buttons because that's the uh, yeah that, that's more logical for. Don't forget that most of our users are not experienced uh, and not advanced users of the IT, and most of them are women who you know are not that familiar with uh, with digits. And it's better to have matching. If you have their X, you should have on other place X as well. Right, no, understood. Yeah, let's finish with uh, five, one, six, one, and seven, one, and let's see what happened next. So we always make sure that it's 15 seconds. Uh, we, yeah. there is nothing for you to worry about. I mean, in 99.99% .99 of the cases, you will have to spend much more time for every type of exercises than oh. 15 seconds. Oh. 15 seconds happens very, very rare when for some reason subject is not, you know, willing to participate in a particular uh, type of the uh, exercise. But oh. I, I didn't have this experience. Okay. Seven one. After you finish 7-1, there will be something strange going on on the screen. Excuse me, is there any maximum length of each? Uh, each um... Yeah, very good question. So uh, let's hold here. I will answer the question. And are you now seeing the same screen, like one yellow and the rest is blue? The 99 is yellow and the rest are blue. So finish uh, your 3-1. Asam, uh, record a little more, three, one. Ah, so so you, ca you can pause one and go to another test and come back to the unfinished test. Yes, yes, you can change the sequence. So now you have, again, all of the sudden, nine, nine to turn uh, to be orange, even though a moment ago it was blue. Oh, correct. So, yeah. so I have to press it again. Uh, you will have, but let's wait. Let's uh, let's wait. Let me give an answer to Asam question, which is a good one. Is there a maximum time for the for the recording? So first of all, there is no maximum time, but you can record uh, as much as you think is reasonable. And reasonable means that you believe that customer brain is now working on this on the question, but. I wouldn't expect that we have any type of exercise on our test papers, which will require anyone to work more than 30 seconds or one minute. So one minute is something which is maximum reasonable. I wouldn't expect that anyone can hold his brain dedicated to solve particular type of the question or, or particular question for longer than one minute. There are certain exercises like drawing and kinesthetic, which are organically longer, which is okay. But for the types of the questions like, uh, tell me what you see or compare this and that, you will normally get the question in a couple of seconds. And you do one, two, three, four, five. Uh, all of the questions are quite simple. There is no difficult question. They are, I mean, they are really simple. I mean, there is no difficulty in the questions. They are just to activate the brain. So just some of the exercise will organically take longer time, right? So, uh, and for that type of exercises, one minute is something you consider as a reasonable limit. And for some of them, we even ask, so within one minute, please sketch yourself. 
because mm -hmm. other other than that if we don't set the limit some person will spend an hour you know to put every detail this is my eyes the beautiful nose the perfect ears right and we limit the time so this is one minute for you sketch yourself okay so let's discuss why now we have this nine nine button what does it mean and why do we have to record it twice so nine nine is as said the baseline signal of our brain why do we need it we need it to calibrate the system to say where is our bottom line where is our grounding level of the signal so we come to the office the brain physics are different one brain is big another is smaller one is closer to the sensor another is farther from the sensor one person is shy, another person is angry, right? So all of this will be reflected in the brain signal, which we record using 99 button doing nothing. Remember the exercise of 99. See it straight, hands in front of you, don't think about anything, don't close your eyes, just relax. And we record the baseline. And what will happen when you will ask verbal type of the question? So your brain was in this state. And then with the exercise, you change the state to be here, just to visualize it in a simple way. So what's it, what is gonna be analyzed by the algorithm is the delta is here. So that means that, you know, our angry, shy, hungry is here, and it's also here. So when you analyze the delta, you may neglect all of other aspects except, except the, uh, the exercise that you are doing because you know that the change in the state of the brain power and the brain signal was only caused by the uh, exercise itself. If there is no noise, of course. <clears throat> Understood the concept. So why do we have to record it twice? Can, can you guess Maram or Hassan? Yeah. No. Why do we record it in, in the beginning and in the end? Yeah, at the beginning you were quiet, uh, you were relaxed, and then when you start uh, taking the, um, the uh, questions, uh, your mind starts uh, getting those questions and you are not relaxed anymore. So he wants you to go back to the state that you were before. When you finish, he wants you to go back, I think, to the state that you were before, relaxed and... Uh -huh. More. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that that's a correct way of, uh, of 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 understanding. Just a little correction. When you be, when you start doing the test, so before any exercise, you are more nervous because you you are, you don't know what to expect. How difficult are the questions? Will I be able to do it? So your yeah. first recording will will be like this. And then when you finish, you become more relaxed because I already passed everything. I'm not nervous. I'm not shy. I already make a good connection with the person. And so your baseline, a little bit change. So to make the comparison more precise, we take an average. So we measure in the beginning, then in the end. And as a baseline, we will take an average of that. That gives us a little bit more precise report result. So let's record the last nine nine, press it, Asam. Remember, this is the only one that you don't, you don't need to stop. It will automatically stop in 15 seconds. Yeah. And, and during this one, uh, do we like interact or again, no. leave the person relaxed without talking? Without Absolutely. Talking? And it's prohibited to interact. So this this should be a baseline do, of brain doing nothing. Okay. Okay, so now another button appeared on the screen. The flag, yeah. Which is which is the finish. So the only the only way for you to finish is to do everything. So you cannot do part of this assessment and finish. So you mm -hmm. only need uh, the only way is to finish everything. Right? So now you press the flag. Okay. Now take off the device. Take off device from you. Okay. Switch it off. 
Okay, Maram? Yes. Switched off? I did, yeah. Okay, very good. And now it's a time to say, dear kid, you may go, you may play a little bit with, your, with the toys that I have, you can draw something. And uh, in the meantime, I have to talk to your mommy. If you're willing to, mommy, here are some questions. We already done everything with your daughter. Yeah. She's so good in everything. I never seen such a smart girl and she was so you know, willing to participate. So encourage parent. Now everything is recorded. Everything is on server. Uh, if you're willing to, we may uh, put on the same diagram of the resource priorities, your TQ diagram, the ideas that you may have about your kid, if you're willing to. So yeah. you can visually compare what you think versus what resource is. Are you willing to? Yeah. Okay. So can you, and this one, this screen, you don't show to the customer. You okay. to, to parent, you just discuss with her and try to understand what is the highest priority and what is the lowest and what's in between out of the free discussion, right? Okay. So you discuss every uh, intelligence, but don't ask him like, uh, put the score from 10 to 19. For, for parents, it's difficult. I mean, for probably okay. for you, it's easy to put the scale, but for average person, that's a confusing question. What is 90? Why you only have 16 and I, I want to put 70? That's a road to nowhere. Just have a free discussion and try to listen to him and to get his priority. What is, you may ask directly like this. So what is, what do you think the, out of these five intelligences, what is the best of him? Verbal, music, creativity, or kinesthetic? And he probably will come up with one and with the last one. He will yeah. say that mathematics is number one, kinesthetic is complete crap. And that gives you an answer, that's it. Okay. Other than that, you may describe every uh, talent potential and say, okay, so for verbal, how, how easy for him to understand the complex language, to use the complex language? Is, is this something he's very profound with? He probably will say, Mm, I haven't noticed something like that, but not, it's not bad for him. So it's, you look at your screen and decide probably that's 60, right? Little above average. And then another one, he may say, uh, uh, let's put 60 here. Okay. okay. Mm. Math and logic. So the same question, how you know, easy for him to navigate in the world of digits, of counting, of the logic. And he may say, wow, that's a complete crap. Uh, this is something I, I wouldn't ever imagine that he is going to do in his life. And you decide to put 10, right? Got it. Okay, music. So how about music? Is he the one to enjoy music, to select music based on his you know, feelings? and probably composing some, some rhythms or melodies. Yeah, I believe it's 90. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the best, the best, the best thing he does, right? Creativity ha ever appeared to you with uh, uh, descriptions of the worlds and the places and the things that, th that never happened before. And by the way, creativity always um, come along with good memory for nonverbal information. So mm. kids with a good potential and creativity, they always can remember what has happened to them a year back. Dear, my, um, I know my daughter, she's, and I know her uh, creativity is number one. And she is absolutely zero in mathematics. But uh, if, if I go with her to walk in the street, she will, she will be able to tell me what was the weather a year back when we've been only once in our in her life at this place. So they always how, can remember how old, this. How old is she, Sergi, if I may know? She's, she's 10 now. Okay. okay. Yeah, like places, things happened, uh, sounds, so anything nonverbal, because these, these are the building bricks for them. Yeah. Out of these building bricks, they, they, they <coughs> create the, the new worlds okay creativity um 60 
Yeah. Yeah. Fine. We're on. Just put anything. We're. we're yeah. Just put anything, and we we finish it. So uh, here you see, one parent may say that everything is excited. Go ahead. Put everything ninety. Okay. Go ahead. And okay. another will say he's so stupid. I I I don't I don't know I don't know what to answer you. Put everywhere ten. What they 10. will see, what they will see on the diagram, they will have something in the middle. Correct. Being excited about everything and being frustrated about everything, actually the same. You don't put any priority. Okay. You haven't yet decided. So what they, they what they will see on the diagram, they will see everything is in the middle. If they will say like uh, uh, one is sixty and the remaining is ninety. Okay. You will see four to be. 15 and only one randomly selected to be 90. Okay. Just to indicate that he's still frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, so these, these are the little tricks we need to know about. We need to use, yes. Well, uh, so uh, what we provide, we provide them the uh, understanding of the priorities of uh, the area uh, of their kids' resources, but we also need to show them their own priorities. So kid may, on, may only have one priority uh, edge being number 95, right? Mm. This is the highest resource area. So you should also have the one priority to at least with a small gap to the second one. So we out of everything excited, we will select one, which we will say that you focus on there and that will be a gap. Mm -hmm. Let's play okay. with this and uh, we, we're gonna see this next. Um, let's make an, another test and put this scenario and see how it's reflected. Let's put 40 here. Okay. And then I put submit. Submit, yep. Okay. Asam, you also press submit. Yes. Now, now Asam will uh, do everything okay and you will probably faced, uh, yeah, a, an error. So let's wait for Assam. All done? New pressure block. Yes. What, is, what, what does it say? Uh, TQ testing session success, success rate completed. Yep. yep. So when you will, uh, uh, when everything is okay, you will see the screen like Assam is seeing and you oh. see an error. Uh, Maram. So yes. this is the type of the error that uh, appears when you use the sensor for the first time. It only happens once in the lifetime okay. because the sensor was not registered in the system. So once okay. it appears in your location in um, in uh, in a Cyprus, for after the first use, it's going to be linked to your license and it's going to be valid to use in your license. And if sometime you will uh, consider to use that in, in, in another location, the, the sensor, it will not be possible. So it is linked to, 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 to the location. Okay. That's done for the purpose, not avoiding roaming of the sensors, but avoiding of using a non, um, uh, non verbatoria sensors, because you still you know, can buy any toy from the market. And you, okay. uh, yeah. Even though buying from us the sensor is even cheaper than buying it from, from the market, some, some partners, they decide to buy it from the market, but they are not valid to be used because we use the adopted software on the, on the chipset yeah. from the vendor out of, out, of, out of the manufacturer. So we had to prevent of using it. So that it has no other impacts rather than the first use. No. Okay. So now okay. uh, you press, but now what happens is your license is blocked you exactly. multiple uh, notifications like short message, email, that license is blocked. I'm going to unblock you the license now. Okay. Sergi, until, until you do, so this can work all over Cyprus and Greece, just in case we want to test it out in Greece, right? Uh, that will work globally anywhere in the world, but only with your license. So you can travel okay. with your case to United States, to any place, I mean, to any uh, territory which is not yet covered. Just let us okay. know and uh, that's the way we live. I mean, 
it's it's very often that partners are uh, um, sending us a message that I'm going to travel to my relatives living in Australia. Can I do tests there? And as long as there are no partners, yes, you, you can. And even if there are partners, okay. if you don't do any advertisement there, which may harm the business of the existing partner, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't promote it, you go just, you know, with your friends, with your relatives, with your connections. If that's your connections and they will become the customers of Herbatoria, why not? So we allow that to happen, but without the advertisement. So any territory on the global is available for you by the notification on demand. So you just send us the notice and we say you that, yeah, okay, there is no partner. So you can go and, and do it or there is a partner. So please be silent without any advertisement. Mm -hmm. Clear, clear, and, and fair as well. Yeah. So who, who, we lost someone? Uh, oh, we lost the tablet, right? The tablet's still here, shall I um, remove it? Oh, no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Ah, we lost again the uh, Assam. Okay. Let me unblock your license. Okay. So you are international Greece and Nicosia yeah. Uh, by the way, the other case, and that's quite often, which may lead um, for the report to be blocked, not the license, but report to be blocked. <clears throat> is when you are using outdated version of the software. Okay. So we have As, to do updates um, every, every month? Uh, no, every time you get uh, a notification that software needs to be updated, okay. it has either urgent requirement, so, because sometimes Google issues the updates on the system, which we will have very urgently to follow up to keep our system working. And then it will say like, uh, by tomorrow, please update, or by the end of the week. Uh, in, uh, in a normal case, it's like a non-urgent notification saying that uh, do it whenever possible within a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't do it, the system will block your, I mean, the license is fully operational, but report will not be processed until you update the software. Okay. So now your license is activated. You should receive the notifications. Yeah, license um, activated. License active. Yeah. Okay, so log into application again. Uh, leave this one. Yeah, yeah, please show us because uh, there is something also we're gonna practice now, which is important. So if you experience this uh, session closing, closure abrupt, um, uh, errors yeah. for some reason, so you probably lost the internet, mm. right? You begin the session, everything is fine. But when you finish the session, you press submit button and there is all of a sudden no internet. So system cannot receive the data or case like this. So you got for some reason uh, license blocked and you need to log out and log in again. So please share your screen now. Um, oh yeah, I see it. I yeah. see. Okay. Uh, uh, your session is complete, but data was not sent. If okay. you go to appointments, go to appointments, scroll to Wednesday. Okay. okay. Why is it, it saying? Yeah, it, sti it still says new, okay. right? Yeah. It's like no report and no, not uploaded. Uh, go back. Yep. So now your data is recorded, but not sent to the, uh, to the, to the server. How to deal with that? Go to settings. So data is not lost, data is stored on the tablet. You open manual send, which manual. is the second item. And okay. you see it's here. Okay. So you need to finish the session. 
-hmm. Click on it. Yeah. Cleaning the data. And now I'm going to receive it on the server side and the server going to process it. And you're going to receive the, uh, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the report. I will receive it on the tablet here. You're going to receive, uh, so you're going to receive it on a location email. So go on a general tab. So on the application, click the general. And look, oh, there is no indication of location email, but I'm quite sure the location email is the shady. Oh. Yeah. I think you're not going to receive oh, okay. it because the email of the customer is the email of the uh, of one of the licenses. Yeah, oh, that's right. All right. But let me unblock it for you. I, I will unblock it and um, you're going to receive it. Okay. Uh, so uh, th th this this is one of the um, one of the points which always um, lead us to discussion. So we we block any reports, the system will block any report which has the email or the telephone number of the uh, licensee. Okay. We need a uh, customer to receive a report directly from the server hidden in the snows of Siberia. Why do you think it's important? For not changing any details? Or not over for, yeah, exactly. It's not. It's not about uh, mistrust um, between me and uh, and the partner. That's about client confidence that mm -hmm. he receives it automatically from the server. So okay. by getting the by getting the report in five to ten minutes, right away from the from the um, from the server, he may be confident that nobody has seen his report, nobody has, you know, has reviewed the data, it's okay. automatically processed and automatically sent. That's, believe me, that's an important to make him believe in what he receives. Okay, Sergi, let me ask you a question. Now, if I wanna um, uh, do the test for my little one, how would it be? Uh, you just uh, sent to a telegram uh, the uh, to to the support saying that uh, I'm gonna test uh, I'm gonna do a report number this and number that using my email address uh, to do it for my son or you can do it after you can finish the test okay. and send the unblocking request just send the number and the reason for that there might be different other reasons so probably customer few of them very you know, strongly reject to give the, the email address or sometimes, but I never believe in these cases. Uh, they say mm -hmm. that uh, I don't have the email address, even though you cannot configure your telephone without having the email address. Mm -hmm. But sometime one out of 100 cases, you will face that, that's okay. Just send us the notice, but not making it, it, don't make it a general practice. Yeah, yeah, sure. But for example, if, if I have another email, for example, Madame Taba, yep. I can receive the uh, report. Yep, yep. But again, don't make it a, a practice. I mean, as long as we manage that as an exception, that's okay. But the oh, general... Yes, a little one, just to check their, yep. uh, their time. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah, Shady okay. Saba is blocked, so let me let me unblock it. Mm -hmm. So very good. So normally you receive the report from five to 15 minutes after you finish the session and you send and you submit the data. Go to appointments on your tablet. So now you see it, data on the server. Okay. That means that you, you did the test, you recorded the data, and it's now being processed. Okay. So return to this page 10, 15 minutes later, and you will see it's either ready or sent. So what is on your, Assam? Yeah. Oh, okay, you, you are on mute. So what's the status of the report? Yeah, 
data on server now. Oh, it's still on the server. So if on, in case you have delay more than 15 minutes, but make sure that it's 15 minutes, mm. you go to Telegram and ask for the support. Because in, uh, in, uh, if that's more than uh, 15 minutes, that's a failure. So within 15 minutes, 100% of the re reports are being processed with a, with a guarantee and being mailed to the, uh, to the client and to the location. If it is not, then either it is blocked or there is a general outage or license issues. But before that, don't bother the technical support. I mean, oh. before 15 minutes, just sit and wait. Does it happen often? Uh, not then, quite often, not quite often. That uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, I don't know if it's already in your contracts, but starting from this year, we already uh, take an SLA obligation for 15 minutes because we are quite confident in the capacity of the system. And we want our partners to, to feel confident, but that happens. So far uh, it affected, uh, we made a calculation um, sometime back it, it, it did affect it not more than a dozen of the reports lifetime long. That means that the outage happens and uh, data is lost. So that happens uh, for no, not more than a dozen of the reports, but still it happens. And as long as we grow, that's a, it's not normal way to have the failures, but the reality is that failures happens. In that case, if, if it was, if that happens, yeah, not often, but if that happens, this case happens, and then we, we report to the main like system, and does it happen that, for example, it takes very long time and the parents cannot get the get get, get the result on the same day and have to have to come come back again on a different day? That could be that could be a different scenarios that I mean failure is never general failure is always uh, need to manually solve it and see what we can do it could be a data lost for even for reasons out of our control that could be a general internet outage on the on the path of the of the data transmission so it's already sent but not received that may happen never experienced uh, so data lost that may be a report loss so data processed but report is lost for some reason so it, it the failure happens in the moment when it is not yet saved but already offloaded and it could be the the case of data broken but still available to be processed and report to regenerate it so it just takes a longer time the general uh, case is that if you don't get it in 15 minutes, you raise the ticket and you get the response. Either it's a failure, which happens rare, but happens, or there is like a formal issues like emails or sensor use or no payments or whatever, the, the formal things, right? So most of yep. the cases can be solved as said, so as said, in five in five years, we've lost less than a dozen of the reports. Okay. So do we do we redo the test? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, another part of the story. If uh, you did the test and the data or report is lost, so we confirm to you that there is no way to get the report either because of uh, data or report lost. Then you may redo the test, but uh, we will supply you another albums. So another testing modules, you will have to do it with another testing modules because you cannot do it with the same testing modules. Yes, because of memory. Exactly, so we do have it. We don't spread it uh, for, for, for a general use. So we, uh, we supply it uh, on demand. And okay. uh, once that will happen, hopefully that will never happen. We will supply you a copy of this uh, spare uh, spare test uh, tools. By the way, internationals, I think never ever experienced this this kind of failure. Yeah, we keep our fingers crossed here, uh, Sergi. Mm -hmm. We don't want that uh, for sure. No one wants failures. Uh, a quick question: in in this event, like Maram did. She took two appointments, but only she delivered one. Will the system block it until they receive two? Uh, 
what do you mean appointments okay remember here when when we did an appointment or we uh -huh. Uh, we reserved for two tests. Yep. And in reality, what happened is that only one test happened. Well, only we did one test. Uh, will we be able to get the report of this one test or it will not uh, complete until the second test is done? No, every report is independent from another. That's the first thing. So you may make four people appointment, a, a whole family, and then COVID, you know, change the plan and only one appears. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that they are completely independent. But uh, second thing is that uh, actually we did two appointments for tomorrow, but we did the testing for, for Wednesday. If you yeah. go to uh, Maram, please scroll to Tuesday, one day back. You, uh, uh, one day, yeah. So you still see these appointments not used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Those are okay. different appointments. So we made two using the website and one using the, the tablet. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So they are completely independent. Okay. Okay. And you can select up to three slots, by the way. Using the website, uh, we limit the quantity to three. Uh, one, two, three. So you may use either one or two or three slots consecutively. Uh, so far, n no one experienced uh, an issue with that, but I can guess that one, uh, I don't know, Muslim country may have a wish to make a 12 or I don't know how many appointments at the same time. A report is sent. Now you see that status is changed? Yeah. A report is sent, meaning that all intended parties receive the report. It is mailed to location. Copy of the email, a copy of the report is mailed to location. Okay. Uh, copy of the report is mailed to a customer. Uh, customer received also a short message with the link to the report. Mm -hmm. And uh, you as a, as a licensee received a notification that the process is done. You it's an email email notification but i cannot access uh, the details right yeah you cannot so, so the copy of the report is only sent to location email which is now shady i i actually received the uh, copy received, of the report yes a copy of the i actually received three emails so uh, yeah it's good so maybe we need to just change it um, until uh, Shadi is here. So that mm -hmm. No, 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 Maram, we don't need to change it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do whatever you want. He just, uh, Sergi, I'm blocked to send it to me. But oh. usually it's not going to be sent to me. No, you uh, have the, the location is under your email and under your, because here when I go to general, I don't have the email location. I cannot but, uh, yeah, I'm quite sure it's it's a shady because we always put uh, a location okay. email as the as the first licensee provided. Yeah. So, so I right. think Maram, Maram, we have to change that, and your name with Nicosia and everything. So yeah. maybe we drop uh, Sergi an email. With, okay. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, that's that's fine. Sergi, the the report I received, I received one, which has the uh, TQ diagram. Yep. And, and then another email that has the PDF. And then it's a third email that says it's been sent to the client just on the yep. header. So the, the, the one with a nice looking diagram and the message from me or from Habib, I cannot remember exactly, is for the customer because your email is used as a customer email. Uh -huh. Uh, the simple email with a copy of PDF is uh, to you as a location. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the third one, the simplest one, is uh, the notification of the process is done for this report, uh, also sent to location. And the simple one is also received by uh, Neurometrist. Okay, so, so the first one that has the uh, TQ diagram, uh, it's been sent by you. Uh, it's been sent by it, it's been sent uh, to customer from the system yeah 
Yes, and uh, warm regards by yourself. Yep. Uh, will this always be the case or will it be Maram or myself as the... Once you do localization, so it's per language. So uh, English language, English and Russian license, they have my address. Uh, okay. For example, Arabic, they have um, uh, Peter. okay. Peter's address. Uh, Bulgarian, they will, uh, they have uh, Miroslava address. And once you have this uh, localization done to uh, Greek language, you will have your address. Yeah. Uh, in uh, our, our signature. Right. Uh, yep. 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 Okay. okay. And and in the event that customers would require to have two reports, one in English, the standard language, and one in Greek, in our case, can that be supported? Uh, yeah. You can. You uh, for that you will have to send the request to the support line, and support will output uh, the another version. So once you have once you have two languages available for you. Bef okay. Before starting the test, you choose the language. Okay. Okay. Based on that language in the application settings, based on that language selection, the customer will receive report in that language. Okay. If you want to have the second language for the same report, you have to send the number to the support and support will provide you the second uh, copy of the report. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the report. Sergi, why is it five pages? It used to be much more than this. We're going to talk about that. OK. Also here, there is the, when I open the recording, uh, the data, and um, it says send the report uh, copy to location. So shall mm -hmm. I send it again? It means that I need to send it again, or it's just in case? It's uh, just in case you you lost the report, you can uh, resend it okay. again to uh, to your location. Okay, and the other one, uh, click to add attention and memory to the report. That's right. The By the way, that's the that's the way you can uh, regenerate the report in in the other language. So you can choose the language, another one, then okay. go into the uh, into the uh, uh, appointment and click add attention and memory and it will regenerate the re the whole report with a, with with a new language setting i see okay. that's a bit oh. tricky but but still yeah, yeah. valid Okay, let's 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 move. Yeah. Let's move. So let let us see what we have. Well, um, shall I um, log out? Yeah, you or? can. You can. You can. You see my screen now, right? Yeah. yeah, let me just log into the other one. Do you need the, the tablet again? Uh, I think not for today. I mean, definitely not for today. Okay, okay Sergi, so if I may ask, how long more do we need for the day? Let me, let me check. Let me check because uh, sooner or later we need to stop. Yeah, let's finish one topic here. Probably another 20 minutes. Okay. I know you're tired and, but basically we've done everything intended for the first, uh, for the first day. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's check again what we have covered. So we have case for the test, which has everything. We have uh, briefly looked at the website we, we got familiar with the buttons and a very simple navigation in a software. We got used to customer notification, location, location notifications, complexity, but still uh, has the reasons behind that. So you already familiar with the support. So this is the link to the support. Let me copy it for you if you... Asam, are you already connected to the support or not? I think you're on mute. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not so yet. now it's 
Now it's time. So, so this is the link. Verbatoria, yeah. So uh, don't get afraid and go, don't get confused. This is not the bot. This is just the way we have to name the account uh, for the rules of the Telegram. So there you have a buttons and once you click the button, it will uh, automatically indicate on the responsible administrator side and someone will be assigned to deal with that particular request. And for example, if once Shady knows, noticed that the report became shorter, we're gonna discuss the, the change of the report tomorrow. If you want to have, again, the kilo of the pages and uh, this uh, ton of the papers, you can go to support and press the button legacy reports. And uh, the report will gonna be regenerated uh, in the way you probably seen it sometime back with, uh, with the parts which being now put on archive just to let people be more focused on what is really valuable and required for this time age. So uh, for the support, go to go there, select uh, the group of the question that uh, that is um, that need uh, our solution. Um, someone will handle it. If you're confused which button to use, I mean, sometimes that's really confusing. You just type your question and someone will deal with that. Selecting the category, category of the question will just raise someone attention faster because that will go either to IT or to finance, that's clear. And you will get response faster. If you just type the question without the choosing the, the question, you will also be covered. Your issue will be solved, but it probably will take a little bit longer time. Generally, anything you need from us to share, to request, to complain, to, to, uh, to, to adjust on a server, anything is there. I mean, all of the team is there. There is no other ways and means to communicate with the company except for this, uh, for this, uh, for this tool. Uh, WhatsApp that we used before will be uh, on air until end of May. Because of uh, the new policy, we made a decision to get rid of WhatsApp use because we cannot guarantee the privacy of our customers and our partners with the new policies of, of WhatsApp. So that was the, uh, the reason for us to get rid of using uh, WhatsApp. So WhatsApp will be still available with a very rare use until end of May. End of May, it's gonna be closed as a communication channel. Clear? Yeah. Okay, okay, very good. So uh, you're gonna have three assessment modules. Oh, we, we're not covered yet. So for marketing uh, tools and for marketing supporting materials, you have basically three sources of information. Oh, what a crap. The first one is this link. brandverbatoria.ru it is not localized but it's not the main source for you that's just a very general uh, collection of the um, you know t-shirts design uh, bracelet designs stuff like that very very general and very very formal so it it has or if you need uh, like a business card design it is also there if you want to see the samples of the uh, room decoration, uh, cabinet decoration, it, it is also there. More useful links are this one, shared Google Drive and Instagram pictures folder. I think you cannot see it from now. I will copy paste it uh, to the chat later on. Uh, this is the uh, overall repository for everything useful, like certificates, uh, scientific papers, patent copy, translation of the patent, uh, some articles, Instagram pictures, and Instagram pictures folder uh, have the has the collection of the pictures that we use and visual. Uh, 
image that we use for Instagram uh, posts. So you can take any of them, uh, make your own text or use our text. So general rule that everything that you see on internet or in our resources with a Verbatoria brand belongs to you. Don't, don't bother yourself asking the permission it's it if it is published then it is allowed to be used by any other partner across the globe that's uh, that i mean i i think that that's quite fair but not everyone is happy but need to follow the rule okay all right shady are you yeah, alive yeah, yeah. yes Okay, okay. Another, another one, pizza? No, uh, it's just that my back hurts, so I need to stretch oh. a bit, so you don't want to see me stretch. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, that's okay. I mean, not pretending, I'm just, just curious. Um, so now you have three assessment modules for every type of the intelligence, uh, every assessment module will have three, four, sometimes five exercises. Exercises means papers, right? Okay. For each of every seven. Uh, each page will have the code to remind you which button to use. And you're already familiar with that. Software or um, verbal stands for uh, one, one, mathematics, two, one, music, three, one, creativity, four, one, kinesthetic, five, one, people awareness, six, one, self awareness, seven, one very easy to remember. Based on the testing results, you will get three different types of reports output. For kids age four to 10, for teenagers 11 to 17 inclusive, and 18 plus, oh, it's not teens, it's a mistake here, it's for adults. So you probably, uh, it's not probably, it's likely you notice that the uh, report became more focused, report became shorter, report became uh, less in pages, if, if, if taking that, yeah. that, that simple. So why we made this decision? For example, if, we, if you look at uh, 4 to 10, they also had, uh, except uh, in addition to risk uh, behavior, risk propensity, there was a mindfulness and stress resistance, which is something out of parents' interest for that age group. So what we did, we contacted with our customers, customers meaning those who did the test and uh, received their reports. And we selected those of them who read their report. You will be surprised, many of your customers will not even open the report if you're not doing that with, with, with them. At least one third uh, of your customers not even reading the report or reading just the first page, which is not the bad thing, but keep that in mind. So we, uh, we communicated and received the feedback only from those customers and many customers who have used the data in the report and asking them a simple questions. What was the most important and what was the least important? And the, uh, the, the, the approach was to remove the least important. And the, the parts that we removed to archive, uh, uh, removed to the button of legacy report. So it's still available. I mean, all the, all the report page that you ever seen before from us is still available. It's free of charge. You just go press the button legacy report and you're gonna receive it a, a legacy way. But uh, report, with the reduced amount of page. It actually answers the, the questions which are typical for that age group, which actually backs us and returns us to the very beginning point of our discussion, why they come to your office. They are not coming to receive a nice looking report full of papers and full of information which has no meaning for them. They come with a pain point and pain points for those three age groups are clearly identified by those feedbacks. I mean, it, the only purpose for us to remove the, uh, the items in, in the report is not to save the earth, 
I mean, I don't care. I mean, I live in the country with so many trees, so I can print any amount of the papers for, 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 the, for any country. The only purpose for us to get to this reduced um, positioning of the report is to make sure that sitting in front of the customer, we have shaped tool, shaped arm to, you know, to cut all the, to solve all the issues that uh, that customer has, to, to focus his attention and our attention as well to what is really important, to what, to what really matches to, uh, to the needs of that age group, understanding the needs. It all comes from, not from the bright minds of our partners, which everyone has, but from the customer feedback. So again, I uh, want, uh, want to repeat two things. One thing, consider that seriously. That's done for the purpose of bringing more value to people's life. Less papers, but more value. And that's a very, very serious thing. I mean, for five years, we increased the amount of papers inside the report. And every paper, I'm not saying that there were bad papers or bad modules. All of them are full of information and all of them are still available. But we noticed and very clearly noticed as a voice of our customers that our arm, you know, our weapon became too, too general, not shaped. So we decided to shape it, to, to focus it on a real needs. The second thing here, same importance as, as the first thing, the full modules wherever developed by us is still available for you just send us the notice on a telegram by pressing the legacy report that's it uh, is that for some time bound or this is forever for now well uh my idea uh was after i mean it, it that was not an overnight decision we've been on uh, with it for for a good half a year my idea was that um, decision is very, you know, strict. So I want to live with a shorter version of the reports and gradually forgetting about this legacy stuff because it really defocuses our parents and, you know, they are losing attention. And they, they get frustrated. So that the decision is strict. I was afraid that there will be, uh, um, you know, so many requests for these legacy reports that we will be flooded with that. So the idea was to gradually, gradually introduce the extra payment for this legacy report generation just to, you know, to put some block on that way. So if you really need this report, then you will have to pay a very, very, very teeny amount, but still like something something uh, to have stopping point but uh, the thing happened that once we launched it for two weeks back and we hardly seen even a dozen of requests to re regenerate the legacy report so we decided to extend this free of charge use for a month if situation will not happen uh, dramatically for us to see the flood flooding of this request, then it will last forever until it organically dies, until everyone really reshape the mind. I mean, I know that's a tough decision. It, 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 even for me, that was a transition of, uh, of a six months. I don't expect anyone to be transforming its mind faster than I did. So yeah, let's keep. Yeah. Let's Sergi, keep. I, I, I think I I I lost you for some little seconds here. So what what has changed? I mean, you you are saying we're losing grounds. Which grounds? So for example, you had more comprehensive uh, information in the in the previous reports, right? And now you have removed them. Correct. Uh, grants probably is uh, I, I, uh, it was a voice communication. So let's let's reiterate it again. So uh, four to ten. What is missing compared to the uh, to the legacy report? Yeah. So there are three pages missing. One is uh, attention and memory standalone page with the colors for intelligences. If you remember that, of course. 
yes. that has little use because we don't use attention and memory in uh, kinesthetic. What is kinesthetic? We use it in our classes, in our hobbies, and attention and memory is still on a curriculum and it's still on hobby. And it is being removed as a standalone page because it has no meaning out of that. For parents, important information about the attention and memory is how to arrange the schedule of the subjects of the school, how to pick up the effective out of the school hobby activity. So that is why we keep the same amount inf of information. So no information is removed from the report. Everything information which is useful is still there. So only this unnecessary page uh, duplicating the information of the of the colors of the of the attention and memory for every five applied age is removed because it is ridiculous once they open it they it, right away they are jumping to the curriculum and seeing how this attention and memory affects their classes affects their hobbies so information is there but in more shaped way then uh uh, mindfulness and uh, stress resistance is removed also for kids, for preschool and early school. That is completely out of the attention for the kid, for for the parents that age. What is stress resistfulness? Stress resistfulness is how do we control ourselves facing, for example, exams, or you know, changing jobs. What sense does it have to kids? No sense. Mm -hmm. our, our job as a parent to protect them from, this, uh, from the stress, that's what we effectively ma manage to do. But what is in the focus is risk behavior. How risky is he? How is he, you know, his appetite to go smoke for the first time? Does he have an internal barrier for that or not? That's what parents care about. Mindfulness, what is mindfulness for, for a kid uh, preschool age? And who cares about his mindfulness? That's, uh, th that age is about the school, about the curriculum, the harmony of the, of the development. Mindfulness appears with us um, uh, on the later teenage and, um, and adult phase. Okay. That's it. Uh, the big thing removed is, uh, is the uh, neurocarrier gu guidance part two. That probably the one which added the most weight to the, and the, the size of the report. If you take uh, this as a standalone, as a separate module, for example, the whole report, legacy report of 15 seven, to 17 year old, now is like uh, 16 pages out of which half is only one module. And the problem with that module is that no one, including our partners can really explain it. Uh, I was a little bit willing uh, reading this discussion on a chit chat, um, everyone asking uh, to keep the legacy report. I was willing to ask all of this uh, partners to explain me uh, the uh, neuro uh, career guidance part two, which is 25 industries, 11 meta skills, matching uh, to emotional and uh, applied intelligences. A hundred percent sure, no one except myself would is is able to explain it. It's damn difficult, and even if some of the partners are really experienced to explain it. We haven't seen any, part, any customer feedback being able to explain the value. No customer understood actually this, uh, this part of the report. So that was clear for us to be removed. Okay. And that, um, that's actually two big things. When you say about the amount of the papers, that's basically about those two things. Removing attention, attention and memory as a standalone page. This is one page. And then like 16 or 10 pages of this uh, um, neuro career guidance part two. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I, I completely see where, where you're explaining and how, uh, how you're working around this. But um, honestly, uh, at the end of the day, again, as Sergi, you have, you have a test, and as you mentioned in the beginning of, of the course today, 
this is not a clinical test. This is more of a, a, a technological new technology that's coming in. Now, uh, the, wouldn't that prove that this is not as serious as a clinical test? Now that honestly, I'm looking at the report uh, that you've sent, uh, we are actually talking about four pages because the fifth page is more about the references to the, uh, to the uh, uh, research is done. Now, yep. uh, I mean, are we, are we also trying to have a safe harbor to explain that this is not as serious as a clinical test? Uh, that, that goes uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, not exactly the right direction. So first of all, if you compare this report to the legacy, uh, the legacy will have only two extra pages. And one is description, which is removed. The second page with the description of the talent edges. At, that's okay. the same uh, crap as the last page. No one reads it. So the okay. second page was the description of the talent uh, talent edge, copy paste from uh, from the book, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And another page removed is uh, is attention and memory standalone with only five digits and five colors with no practical use. So the change is only two pages. So that's not about the quantity of the pages. Yeah. The second thing, second thing, very important. Remember, I. Uh, I, I tell you that we're gonna add another module addictiveness. And we've done a, a little survey internally uh, with our partners, what they think about uh, adding, uh, adding another one module because the report is already huge, is already complicated. We started that back eight months ago, already having these feedbacks that the report is too frustrating. But the feedback from partners that I get, what they said is that customers losing trust in the scientific credibility of the report if there is too many information. So what the customers say, how come in 30 minutes test, you measure memory, seven intelligences, risk, mindfulness, stressfulness, addictiveness, what else can you measure? Come on, that's, that's fake. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Even I mean, though, to be honest, uh, yeah, I, I, I will have to do my due diligence, but I, I hear you and I trust your, your, uh, your feedback here. Um, another, another point to, to, to look at now that the age groups or the groups have been reduced from five to three, uh, won't you look at it in a way that the reports are becoming a bit broader? Like for example, when it was from four to seven and then eight to 11 is two different reports that you're almost covering them in one report, which is four to 10. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be, because today, uh, for example, I always reflect that on my own kids. So my nine-year-old and my five-year-old, they will fall under the same category or age groups. But to me, they're two different people. To me, yeah. they're two yeah. different, uh, human beings, they're, they're developing in a different way. They're learning different things. So uh, maybe in, in the past when they were five age groups, that would have maybe showed that Verbatory is more focused, is more specific. Yeah. And now yeah. maybe it's a bit more broader. Does that make sense? That's, that's a very good point. And uh, that takes us even deeper. So if you look at the report that you received, yeah. On the top of the first page, you notice yeah. that it is not the three age group. Okay. Take a look. It's still it's still uh, five age groups. Okay. You notice that? So yes. that's our internal kitchen. The number of the modules and number of the report types. But for the customer perception, they still have five age groups. That's uh, how so you have you you have reduced the uh, testing instead of five different tests there are three tests in, uh, the testing is not reduced because uh, we combined the four to seven with eight to ten so on the page uh, we're going to practice that tomorrow you will see the page the first exercise is four to seven and the second is eight to ten yes for the for the purpose of uh, uh, 
reducing the number of the um, border ages. The problem always with, uh, the, the, you, you also asked the question, parents appear to your office. They have this five-year category and um, eight and um, eight, seven and eight, a border age and a very important age and very critical age for the parents mind and that's always a case to discuss he's smarter than seven so can we you know take the higher standard of the album and before doing that reduction we had to answer no we cannot we should follow and customer losing trust because they think that he can do better, show better result, even though this is all no sense, this is all crap. So we just remove these discussions with parents. We tell them this is the, the album which fits your kid even if he's smart or if you think he is less smart, right? Okay. Okay. So that so, uh, you will still have this discussion uh, on the on the border of ten to eleven. That it's, it still will be the case, but when it's like five borders instead of two, then it's. So so when we when we promote this, say on our website or when we're explaining, do we still say there are five different modules or sorry five different five different. Groups? Age groups, yeah, five. It's still on our website. It's still on our website. It's still everywhere. Uh, so, so it's only for our testing purposes. Exactly. We're gonna do them in two, three modules, three ways. Exactly, exactly. And even the testing procedure for for four year old or six year old and ten year old will be different. Just the album is the same. You take the same amount of the pictures, but one picture you will do for a six year old kid, another you will not do. Okay, 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 fair. Yeah. Fair. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done with my question, so yes. Yeah. So, but uh, Sergi, sorry, uh, now the new modules, the new material, where can I find it uh, so that we... Um... It, is, it is here, obviously. It is here. I will send you now but the sure. link. All right. Let let me send it to you now. I just noticed that you cannot see it on a. It's it's a long day to consume and absorb, Sergi. I know, and that you will are, be you the... are Russian. We're not we're not Russian. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> More, uh, so let me copy you the link, and that will be the last thing for today. Yeah. So okay, you'll copy the link on the chat, right? Yes. Yeah. Copy. So this is the link for the general folder. And this is the test modules. For, for a reason, you cannot copy it. You just have to open it. Yeah. No yes. Yeah. You cannot copy? Uh, you, you cannot copy and paste, you just double click, but for, um, you, yeah, you cannot actually do a typical copy paste thing. Yeah. Oh. Let me then send it to you. As, no, no, it's uh, fine. It's fine. I, I, I opened it. it. You, can, you can go to the link, but you cannot copy it. So that's, that's fine. I just need to save it. So training, uh, no, um, test modules, English, right? That's the one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Maybe I'll try. Exactly. To open them. Okay. Okay, I see them. These are the yeah. three different sets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Thanks. So uh, let's do following arrangement. I will wait for you, uh, for any of you, the same time tomorrow as it's going to be a practice. So I can start with whoever appears. Okay that could be done independently. Once we all gather together, we will uh, go, continue, continue going on uh, with, uh, with uh, a little bit more theory. So tomorrow, okay. whoever can appear earlier, I will be here, sit and wait for you. Oh, super, okay. Okay, and from our side, just to conclude, I think uh, Maram will send you an email with her email and, uh, and telephone number so that we can change this. The, yeah. I think. the fastest yeah. way is to send it to Telegram, then to someone okay. can handle it okay. today. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
right. so thanks for joining and thanks for long day Thank the you. longest day, longest day was for malaysia because uh, i think in uh, malaysia it's already midnight yeah, it's 10, 10 p.m yeah it's 10 p.m oh, yeah. So be strong. Right. Okay, thank you. Have a good sleep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. See you, see you tomorrow, team. See nice, you. nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Nice meeting you too. Bye. Bye.